Welcome to Barker Lane Stadium here in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina for Big South football. The Presbyterian Blue Hose, highest scoring team in college football, face the Campbell Fighting Camels, second home game, and they must stop a 75 point per game offense. Welcome inside the booth with Peter Montemurno, Evan Budgervich. This Presbyterian team, they throw the ball for 575 yards a game. What challenge do they present Campbell's defense tonight? Two things, Evan. Presbyterian's offense is going to force Campbell's defense to not only defend the field vertically, but defend it horizontally. That real estate, 53 and a third yards between each boundary, they're going to spread their formations and force Campbell to make tackles in space. Number two, an offense like Presbyterian, you're going to see it. I like to say that they force defenses in what, into what I call responsibility anxiety. They bring in different formations, formations that the coaches have never seen, the players have never seen, and they force you to make decisions on the fly. We talked to the defensive coordinator, Weston Glosser, this week, and he said, I know that they're going to bring formations we've never seen before. So the moniker was, do your job, don't get mesmerized by the exotic offense that Presbyterian brings, and do your job. And normally, if you play your 111th, Good things will happen for a defense. Presbyterian is led by sophomore gunslinger, Ren Heffley. He's a Michigan transfer already with 14 touchdowns this season. What makes him so dynamic? Well, what makes him dynamic is he has poise. You see him here, he's able to roll out. He's able to throw on the run. He stays in the pocket. He reads the defense. And he's really bought into that Kevin Kelly system. You talked about 14 touchdowns, 10 the first week against St. Andrews, which is a Division One FCS record. Campbell is led by senior receiver Caleb Sneed. Three touchdowns to start his young season. How does he translate that success tonight? Well, Caleb Sneed, NFL caliber player, if you ask me, 6'4 frame. He always goes up and attacks the ball at its highest point. Does a great job as a receiver. Runs great routes. Has a great relationship with his quarterback. His excellence will have to show tonight if Campbell has a chance. If you want defense, you came to the wrong place. Here in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, it's a 75-point-per-game offense against the Fighting Camels, who can score it themselves at over 25 a night. When we come back, kickoff from Barker Lane Stadium right after this on ESPN+. Plus. Time now for our Matabee Holmes keys to the game. Peter, Presbyterian gets the football first, and they must score early. Score early. Use the confidence that brought you here today. The two games that they've had, they've done a great job. Let's see what they can do early here today. For Campbell, doing their job, how do they slow down Presbyterian tonight? We talked tonight? about at the onset, do your job, play your 111th, try not to do anything more than what your job is on defense. And Presbyterian at 2-0, their best start in a decade. The Campbells at 0-2 trying to bounce back tonight. 
You call this a unique decision to give Presbyterian the ball first. I like the decision because Coach Mike Minter of Campbell knows that. He knows what the score is right now. It's 0-0. You don't know what the score is going coming out of halftime, so he'll get the ball coming out of halftime. First meeting since 2019 for these clubs. Campbell, a scholarship club out of the Big South Conference. Presbyterian, non-scholarship out of the Pioneer Football League. As Corey Peterson sends one off, and we are underway in Bowie's Creek. This will, oh, he came out of the end zone and took a step out. That should be a safety. The officials Good. come together here, a critical call early on. Yeah, they're going to get, they're bringing that ball out to the 20. Really on the field. The ball did not fully come out of the end zone. That's right. Therefore, it's first down. So just the player that left the end zone, right. not the ball. They're forward to the 25. Ball stayed behind the boundary to stay behind the end zone line, and we're able to bring that ball out. But that was dicey starting out already for Presbyterian. Big test for this Campbell defense. How do they slow down an offense in Presbyterian that scores 76 points per game? A team that has jumped on opponents 152 points in the first two Set weeks. The game clock to 15 minutes. 15. That's our lead referee, Hank Johns, tonight. And here's your first look at Ren Hefley, the Michigan transfer. Presbyterian runs 21 receivers deep in the group. Hefley to throw. First pass complete. That's Delvecchio Powell and a gain of six. DJ Charles gets the start at safety with Campbell's top three safeties, Aaron Maddox, Dorian Jones, and Darian Slade, all out via injury. And that's tough for a team like this when you're defending so much pass, but let's say they're, they're going to be tested early and often. Kevin Kelly, the head coach at Presbyterian, he runs a no-huddle attack. This is Hefley to throw. Another completion and a first down for Presbyterian. Jalen Witcher out of Little Rock, Arkansas. He's a yard short of the sticks, third and one. And that was a nice throw by Wren. The reason why he does such a good job getting out and he throws on the run is because he have conf has confidence in his offensive line in front of him. Entering the week, Presbyterian defeated two opponents, not Division I, 152-40. to 40. Different task to that against FCS Campbell. Third and one. Hefley backpedals. Pass incomplete. Coverage on the backside. That's Mike Swain to knock it away. And the reason why this play worked for Campbell is they rushed four guys and they can get pressure with just four. They had man coverage with a great job by Peyton Wallen to get over the top of the receiver, knock the ball away. And they're going for a fourth down as we expected. Presbyterian does not punt the football under Kevin Kelly. Just eight times in his 18-year coaching career. Fourth down, Hefley with pressure, escapes, still moving. Hefley intercepted. Peyton Wollard with the first turnover. And we talked about it here, Evan, at the beginning. If they could get pressure on Ren Hefley with four guys, they are going to do well. And they got it here. They did not rush. They rushed four guys. A great job on the backside by Brevin Allen to chase him down. Hefley throws back to the middle of the field. And there's the INT right at the 40-yard line. Sudden change here. For Presbyterian, great field position for Campbell. That's Wake Forest transfer Peyton Woolard with Campbell's third interception of the year defensively. How about this at quarterback? Wiley Hartley gets the start tonight. No Haj Malik Williams at the quarterback position. So Hartley, number 11 in the orange, gets the football. He's out of Atlanta, Georgia. First and 10 for Campbell. Hartley feeds it off. Huge hole for Jamerson. Inside the 30. Jamerson to the 20. Gets a block to the 10 and is finally dragged down after a gain of 29. Well, that is what you want if you are Campbell and head coach Mike Minter coming out of the gates, getting a turnover on downs deep in Campbell's own territory, or deep in Presbyterian's territory, and then a great job by the running back to get through there, Michael Jamerson, for the big first down. Only one rush last week and a one-point loss to Elon. Hartley runs the attack offensively, gives it right back to Jamerson. Now the keeper. Hartley beats his defender, tips to the five, and down at two. First career action for Wiley Hartley all season. He's poised on that first run. Very poised. And you know, they, this is a big RPO offense. Uh, and they do a nice job of looking down the field to see what's what, where the defensive end is. If they don't crash down, they keep the ball and get up the middle. And I tell you what, Wiley Hartley's getting some good plays first 
right out of the gates here for Campbell University. Hartley's played one game in his career, threw a touchdown pass against Appalachian State last fall. Inside the goal line, Jamerson spins. That's a touchdown. An opening 39-yard drive cashed in by Jamerson. Evan, this could not have started any better for Mike Minter's team and the Camels. And you see Jamerson with a great first series, getting behind that big offensive line, averaging 325 across the front. We talked about with Nick Grimes, the offensive coordinator, they look be, they look to run behind Mike Edwards, Matt Price, early and often. Presbyterian elects to go forward on fourth down, and for the first time this season, the Blue Hose trail in the opening quarter. The extra point is through, and a 7-0 lead for Campbell here in this first quarter. And so now there's going to be obviously some adversity early here for Presbyterian. How are they going to respond? When we come back, Presbyterian with the football here at Barker Lane Stadium. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain. And we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Big things are happening this year across the South, from the mountains to the coast. The fast are getting faster. The strong are getting stronger. And the best is getting better. Get ready to raise your expectations. Get ready for something big. Ingles, a proud sponsor of Big South Football. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road. Helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. Roll call sits only 8 a.m. and it's going to be another hot one. Today's high is 85 degrees with lows ranging in the upper 50s. Tomorrow's more of the same, plus some light wind coming in from the northeast. Coming up at 8.30, Paul's got an exclusive... Babe, it's 8 a.m. Fried chicken, better with Pepsi. <sighs> Welcome back to Barker Lane Stadium. Campbell's offense, a quick drive, three plays, 39 yards. You mentioned coming in, Peter, Campbell must score early. They do it tonight after Presbyterian goes for four. They did, you know, everybody, you can't get mesmerized by that exotic offense like I talked about. They got the turnover on downs. They had it deep in Presbyterian's territory, and they took advantage of it on the ground with a brand-new quarterback in taking over for Haj. This is Trevor Moss. The freshman kicker to send the ball away. We mentioned Presbyterian. They always go for it on fourth down. They do not punt. And now this offense trails for the first time all year. So a new challenge tonight as Moss sends it away. This is returnable. And it bounces into the end zone. Perfect kick. The ball goes out to the 25. The Campbell kick goes into the end zone. Presbyterian you know, and talking to Kevin Kelly as well, Evan, this week. I mean, he did say if he was ever possibly forced into a situation as you see the replay here, handoff up the middle as Jamerson goes in for the touchdown and does a nice job of getting the great push on the outside by their big offensive lineman, Mike Edwards. Another NFL caliber type lineman, big guy, crashing that defensive end down hard on the inside, allowing Jamerson to scoop through for six. Presbyterian averages 30 points a game in the first quarter. They're down seven, nothing here as Heffley goes to work. First and ten. Hand off to Vecchio Powell, and he's got nothing. A loss of two on his opening carry. Del Vecchio Powell on the ball three. I mean, you're seeing, Evan, right now, you're seeing this defensive line dominate the offensive line for Presbyterian. 
early. And look at the size of Presbyterian's O-line, the largest at 290 pounds. A little different task from a Fort Lauderdale club of last week at the NAIA here at Division One as Hefley throws, catch to the 30, and a nice game for Matthew Rivera who picks up seven. As you see Levi Wiggins as well taking down the receiver, and that's what you see. The receivers for Presbyterian are going to make catches, but a good defense is there right now to make the stop. As Coach Mike Minter said this week, tackling, tackling, tackling is the key to this football game. Mike Minter spent extra time in the defensive meeting room preparing his team for this Presbyterian offense. They score 76 points a game. Matthew Rivera moves out in motion on third and four. High snap, time, and incomplete. Searching for Jalen Jones. That's Levi Wiggins and DJ Charles in coverage. Setting up fourth down. It was ISO to on that matchup because they, they came out and pressed man. Levi Jones did, Levi Wiggins did a nice job of keeping the receiver in front of him and not watching the quarterback. When you're in man coverage, the cornerback needs to watch the receiver, not the QB. Nice job by Levi Wiggins. Ren Heffley grew up in Little Rock, Arkansas. Watched head coach Kevin Kelly dominate at Pulaski Academy. Now they're reunited in this offense. Elects to go for it again on fourth and four. Heffley the empty set. Time. Heffley scrambles. That's a first down. Nearing Campbell territory. And finally shoved to the ground. He needed four. He picked up 17. And Evan, there was nothing open down the field. Great job in coverage. They played press man again, single high safety, did Campbell. And you see the athletic prowess of Ren Heffley pulls the ball down, gets out just over the 50 yard line before he's taken down, but a nice job of picking up the first down. Good job by Ren Heffley not forcing anything in there when nothing was there in coverage. Presbyterian into Campbell territory for the first time tonight after the tackle by Demarcus Harrington. Heffley, pump fakes, pressure on him, slips it off, finds the receiver Rivera to gain a four. The ability of Red Heffley to escape pressure has been impressive tonight. Very impressive. He has a lot of pressure on him almost every play. Again, the four down lineman for Campbell University doing a great job of getting pressure, which takes pressure off of their defensive coordinator thinking if he's going to bring pressure or not from the linebacker perspective. Here's an inside handoff to Del Vecchio Powell. Huge hole in the Campbell defense, and he's leveled by DJ Charles at the 36. Presbyterian, they can run the ball as well. Over 184 yards rushing. Del Vecchio Powell, the sophomore, a huge piece in that equation. Huge piece. 5'9", stays low to the ground, gets lost there in the middle of the scrum. Nice job by Noah Mangum, the guard, to wash out the defensive end and allowing Powell to get through. Kevin Kelly is a high school coach at Pulaski Academy, nine-time state champion. He knows how to win. Pressure. Fumble. Recovered by Presbyterian. They hang on to the football. That's Michael, Ger Michael Jubran, the redshirt sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, hangs on. So second and long for PC. That was a nice job by JT Whitmore, the defensive end, number 90 for Campbell, coming around the corner, getting his shoulder low below the offensive lineman who was trying to block him there. A nice job to use his leverage and then swat the ball out of Ren Hefley's arms, forcing a second and long. Presbyterian runs 20 receivers deep in the room, and Coach Kevin Kelly told us he'll play nine receivers in this first quarter. We've seen seven check in, including the newest on the field, Kyron Turner in the slot. Heffley steps up, wants an option, might be pass interference, and there's the flag. Yeah, I was watching that route happen there. Evan Peyton, Peyton Wooler was grabbing the receiver, the intended receiver, around the shoulders before the ball was released. So we're going to get a pass interference here around the 25-yard line. It'll be on number 22, Peyton Wooler. Who had the interception on the opening drive to set up Campbell's first touchdown. That was the challenge entering this game. How could Campbell's secondary overcome three injuries to their safety position? Well, and secondary is always helped when you have a front line like Campbell's front line is right here, getting into the defensive backfield. Defense, number 24. Ball play. First down. That's Hank Johns on the call. The foul is actually committed to Demarcus Harrington in coverage. As you see here, coming across the middle, 
You see, wow, yeah, right there. Was oh, that's definitely Peyton, Peyton Bullard. Yep, right there, getting his arms around the intended receiver. Presbyterian at the 29-yard line. Halfway a shovel out to Powell, and he has nowhere to go. Good coverage. Prince Gwena to track him down, the Charlotte product. Mike Swain on the on the far side there. The freshman called in to make a play early and often. Again, he was in space, and Mike Swain did a great job of getting up the field and getting underneath the pads of the receiver who was trying to block him to make a nice stop. Swain along with DJ Charles, the two safeties getting the start tonight. There's an inside reverse, and it nearly works to the 25. Creative play for Jalen Witcher. He gains three. And there's Woolard again stepping up from coverage. And you see no fear out of these defensive backs, Evan, to make plays up near the line of scrimmage. And a good job reading your keys if you're Campbell's defense as they saw the pulling linemen, linebackers getting, running that alley now. And then you see Woolard stepping up and making a nice play. No more creative of a play caller than Kevin Kelly. He is pulling out all the stops in this first quarter. You see trips to the field right now. Single high safety by Campbell. Testing the man-to-man -man defense. Heffley looking left. Slings it to the sticks. Wants a deep option and misses his target. Wanted Matthew Rivera. Now it's fourth and seven. Good single high safety coverage over the top. Really, there was nothing to throw at there. Had to throw it long. And so far, this defense has really met the call here, had met the, the ringing of the bell, if you will. That's easy that coverage for Malik Great as well. Really easy coverage. Good job over the top, help there by the safety. Forcing another fourth down. And as you know, Evan, we talked about, they're not going to attempt a field goal or a punt. They're going to go for it here. Presbyterian has not kicked a field goal this season. They're four for nine on fourth down attempts. This is the bread and butter of this PC offense. Play clock down to four. And a timeout taken by head coach Kevin well. Kelly. First charge time out of that. When half. you watch Presbyterian, Presbyterian score 75 seconds. points in the first two games, it brings up a question. How does this Media team timeout. figure out a solution? Can they score? We'll find out next on ESPN+. Plus. Kevin Kelly, at the 52 years old, had the call of his life this past May, was offered the job the day he interviewed for the Presbyterian head coaching position. There is so much buzz around this program now with Kelly leading the charge. Well, there really is. I mean, he's known all over the country. Bill Belichick, the head coach of the New England Patriots, called him the best high school coach in the country last year before he came to Presbyterian. Carries a lot of respect around a lot of different football circles. And again, this is, this is the job he has now, and he's looking to bring his system 
into the college ranks. Biggest test for Presbyterian. How do they handle a scholarship opponent? Here's a bad snap to Heffley on fourth down, and it results in a fumble recovery for Brevin Allen. That's the second straight fourth down stop for Campbell. Well, that's what happens when you have pressure coming up from the front line. And this is just a, a mistake that's made by not the snap was over his right shoulder, but maybe Heffley was looking to see what might have been open. That was there enough for him to bring down. But a mistake like that costs the team again. Campbell has the ball turned over. Great, great field position to start their drive. Presbyterian entered this game plus four in turnovers. They're minus two in the first quarter. Wiley Hartley returns to quarterback. His first pass is caught. Out to the 45, staying towards the sticks, and a strong run. That's the nifty Wyoming transfer with a near first down, Dante Crow. Well, and also, Evan, coming into this game, Campbell hadn't forced a turnover. That's the first one that they forced this season. And against a team like Presbyterian, who could put up numbers quick, that is a vital part of their game plan. Mike Minner, the head coach for Campbell, calls Dante Crow agent zero. All he's done, seven catches in this young season. Wiley Hartley, a two-sport athlete, baseball pitcher, and a quarterback for the football team. Gets his first career start tonight. Facing a blitz, gives it off to Jamerson, and he's tripped for a loss. That's Nagy, the senior linebacker on the stop. You look at Nagy there, the first team, preseason, all-conference, doing a nice job. Already has 10 tackles coming in on the season. Did, did a good job recognizing and diagnosing that middle of the field. It looks like the coverage that Presbyterian is playing is that quarter's coverage. So if they come out in that quarter's coverage, you're going to see a lot more run plays by this RPO team, that is Campbell, talking to their offensive coordinator this week, Nick Grimes. He said, I have two game plans based upon what they bring us. Campbell 35% on third down this season. There's Caleb Snead out of motion on the snap. Hartley the slant, wide open target. Jai Williams the first down to the 40. Well, and the coverage there, again, the quarter's coverage. The defensive back was playing about 10 yards off the ball, and that's when a receiver understands leverage, and they break that route right off, and a good job by Hartley to see that. No huddle handoff, Michael Jamerson. He gets a block from Crow to the 35. Now inside the 20, Jamerson's taking bodies to the 15-yard line, finally tripped up by Jeffrey Johnson. A partner not only can Dante Crow catch the ball, he can block in space and allowing Jamerson to get to the outside to the boundary, getting him into the red zone again, and they can see the shadow of that goalpost as they're heading into the end zone one more time. Presbyterian had an impressive win last week, 68-3. Much different challenge here on Saturday. Hartley to the end zone. He wants Sneed and misses his target. Caleb Sneed, two touchdowns going up in the air. Head coach Mike Minner loves his ability to play the ball in the air. Wiley Hartley tried it again. He was looking at Sneed the whole entire time. I like what Hartley did. He held the safety for a split second in order to get Caleb down the field, but just overthrew him by a hair. But a nice veteran play by Wiley Hartley to hold the safety with his eyes before he went to the left side boundary. Wiley Hartley just turned 20 last month. He's growing up quickly tonight as he keeps it on the misdirection. Down to the 10, trucks a defender and Johnson to the 8. Hartley, on the quarterback keeper. Hartley for a dual sport athlete shows great athleticism at the quarterback position. And he shows confidence on a play like that where you have the mesh point where you're showing that play action and the quarterback's reading the defense and the defensive end or the linebacker crashes down. He takes it. Good job by Hartley on this. This is play. a free play for Hartley. Lobs for Sneed. Can't hang on. The penalty is live. That'll be a, a flag on the play. encroachment on Presbyterian. Yes. Not a bad player to take a shot oh. with. Defense, number 97. Half is hits the goal, results in a first down. That's David Kinnerd, the junior out of Lexington, South Carolina. And now a first and goal from the just inside the five-yard line. Michael Jamerson scored the opening touchdown for Campbell. Three-play drive, 39 yards. Hill in motion before the snap. Another encroachment. And halfway closer on the penalty. Flags on the play. Yeah, these pre-snap mistakes, Evan, Offside. that's what drive Defense. head coaches crazy. Half is the goal. Still first down. See, they're making personnel changes here. 
The entire defensive line, Sutter, Kennedy, and Kennard all come out. Get to the game clock, 5-32. 5-3-2. Busy first quarter for Henry Johns, our lead official tonight. Hartley wants a second straight touchdown drive. Feeds to Jamerson. An easy six points for Campbell. This was not expected coming into today's game with the high-powered offense that Presbyterian is. Now, Campbell's looking like the high-powered offense themselves, the second touchdown of the day by Michael Jamerson. The RPO play by Hartley hands it off at the mesh point, watching what the defense is doing. Terrific job by the offensive line to give Jamerson a gigantic hole to run through for Jamerson's second score of the day. Just one carry all of last week. Two touchdown runs in this first quarter. Five runs for 58 yards. And Isaac Riffle makes it 14 to nothing here in the first quarter. When we come back, can Presbyterian find an answer offensively? We'll find out next. Welcome back to Barker Lane Stadium. Kickoff underway to Andrew Doss, who takes it from his own two. Doss past the 10, and he's tripped up there. Reese Moulton, the tackle, and Presbyterian starts at its 14-yard line. Andrew Doss on the kick return. So at some point, if you're Kevin Kelly, the head coach, you don't punt, you go for two at every point, how do you manage a 14-0 deficit? I mean, you have to manage it like, you know, he's, he's very confident in his system. He's very confident. And the players are, have bought into this system as well. But at some point, if you go down three scores, then it becomes a field position game. You can't keep giving up, sh giving short fields to the offense. So you wonder what adjustment they're going to make, Evan. This is a huge, huge drive for Presbyterian right now. Ren Hefley, four for eight passing as Delvecchio Powell feeds it off to Hefley. The quarterback wants to throw, and he's sacked. Roy Yancey drops him for a loss back to the eight. Well, the reason why he had a sack there, you had great coverage down the middle of the field by Roy Yancey. And a great job by number 19 there in your screen for Campbell College, kind of setting the edge and allowing Hefley to plant his feet when there was nothing for him to throw to down the field. We asked defensive coordinator Weston Gloucester, how do you defend plays like this when the running back's in, the quarterback's moving around? He called it like playing the option. You have to be ready for everything. Hefley gets the football. It's a screen back to Powell. Knocked up and incomplete. Levi Wiggins read it perfectly. It's that graduate, that, that graduate player, he does a nice job of diagnosing what's in front of him. And that's the thing we talk about at the onset. Don't get mesmerized by an exotic offense. Everybody has a job. There's not 22 players on the offensive side of the ball. There's 11. Although it feels like it with how it, Kevin it, Kelly uses his play. It sure does. It sure feels like 22. And it's like a PlayStation type of thing come to life. But so far, Campbell's done a very good job. Third and a long 16 for Ren Hefley at quarterback. Hefley out of the pocket, chased by Whitmore, and he's tripped for the sack. Campbell's defense has not been fooled tonight. Taken down by Whitmore. Now it's fourth and 16. What do you do here if you're Kevin Kelly with a team that does not like to punt? This is You wonder now if you bring a, a quick kick into a game like this where you have the quarterback and the shotgun and no one's really back there, so you quick kick it out of there. Look at Hefley. He's talking to his head coach with yeah. 18 seconds on the play clock. Have to make a decision here on fourth and 20. I mean, if you turn it over here, 
and you're going to go down three scores and you're still in the first quarter, Evan, something has to change in this game. And we asked Coach Kevin Kelly about this. He plays the analytics. He loves the numbers of his system. He does. And a delay a game here, we'll back it up as we saw Heffley think about a punt. Yep. For the snap, delay a game. Offense, number seven. Half distance to the goal, still fourth down. Well, you called the partner. He was talking to Kevin Kelly, he being Ren Heffley, the quarterback, with 18 seconds left on the play clock. So they were, points were, time was at a premium at that point. And I think you're going to see Heffley kick it as they've dropped the safety even deeper. That's Dante Crow back to receive. Presbyterian has never punted this season. This is a first on ESPN Plus. And it looks like his first as the ball goes about 15 yards and drops down to the 25 yard line. Excellent field position, and I mean excellent field position. It really, I mean, if your head coach, Mike Minter of Campbell University, you couldn't have asked for a better start with 3.29 to go in the first quarter. You're up by two scores, and you're deep already in your opponent's territory. And Evan, I think the key to this game so far is that Campbell's defense has brought the game to the offense of Presbyterian, and they've only rushed with four guys. They haven't had to give pressure and give a linebacker away or give a defensive back away because they know their defensive line is going to get pressure on the quarterback. Hartley to throw. Wants Snead. That's a completion. And a five-yard pitch and catch to Campbell's top receiving target. Snead is a player, and he makes a great job on that route. Cuts it sharp, and the ball is thrown before he even turns around. So great communication by Snead and his quarterback, Wiley Hartley. Eighth reception of the year for Snead. That's second in the Big South Conference. Hartley wants another throw. He's got the end zone and a wide open Williams for six, who hangs on to the football. Third straight scoring drive for the Campbells. Boy, they have come out striking quick. Jai Williams in the slot to the near side. Trips three wide receivers to the near side. It was just a go route from the jump. Hartley diagnoses it, got separation. Jai Williams did on number 16. Ola Salamanu for Presbyterian. That's the first passing touchdown of Wiley Hartley's season, the second of his career. And how about this start for Campbell in the first quarter? A 20 to nothing lead. As Riffle looks to add on to it, and he does. So Peter Montemurno, Presbyterian, plays the numbers, the analytics of allowing receivers to go one-on-one. -on -one. They're not going to challenge with double teams. It comes back to bite them this time. It, it has. And again, they, and Campbell has brought out some, some different formations of their own that maybe they haven't shown in the past couple of weeks that the defense for Presbyterian may not have been ready for. We talked about those things happening on the Presbyterian side, but I think Mike Minner and, the, and Nick Grimes, the offensive coordinator, had done a nice job in the game plan so far. Here's head coach Mike Minner. He had the challenge of slowing down the nation's top scoring offense. And in year nine, Mike said, all you can do is be ready for the moment of today. Not get overwhelmed by the, the avalanche of distractions. His team looks focused tonight. And his team looks focused. And he also said, you have to play for 60 minutes, no matter what the score is. Whether you're down by three or up by three, he told that to us this week. You have to play for 60 minutes. You can't become defeated or you can't become complacent if you're up in this game. So let's see if that message resonated with his team. A two-play 25-yard drive certainly helps. The Camels lead by three touchdowns. Trevor Moss to boot this ball away. And it goes into the back of the end zone. Presbyterian starts at its own 25. They've allowed three sacks tonight, interception, and a fumble on three offensive drives. How do the Blue Hose steady things down on the offensive end right here? Well, I think you, uh, you don't have, I mean, 21 nothing in the first quarter. It's, it's still a ball game. They still can come back. I mean, these guys can score quickly, and they can score often. And the defense for Campbell understands that. But if I was Kevin Kelly and if I was Ren Heffley, I would take a look at some short passes, get some bubble screens, get down the field. Not necessarily can't score 21 points with one throw. Get the ball over, win field position a little bit before you worry about the end zone. On the last drive, PC punted from its own two-yard line. Here's a misdirection to Del Vecchio Powell. And the running back gains two. The creativity of Kevin Kelly is certainly unique. However, Campbell's speed and athleticism is all over. Well, Kevin Kelly talked about it this week, Evan. He said, he both told both of us, you know, what's the, what challenges does Campbell present? He said they're bigger, they're faster, and they're stronger. And they're showing that so far today. Presbyterian, a non-scholarship team out of the Pioneer Football League. 
Hefley out of the pocket, slings it left, tipped and incomplete. Excellent coverage, a trio of camels in the secondary. Brent Hefley, five for 10 in this game, just 21 yards. Good coverage here. Great coverage there, stepping in front. And their defensive backs are all over the field today. They're playing from sideline to sideline, like we talked about they'd have to do in this football game. Sets up third and eight. Presbyterian must get to the 35-yard line. Hefley, the empty set. Pressure in his face. Takes a shot. Rivera brings it in to the 47. That's a gain of 20. And Rivera does a nice job of running the route. Campbell finally brought linebacker blitz up the middle. Ren Hefley does a nice job of diagnosing that, knowing it's man coverage, throwing it to the outside for their first first down. Now they got the field position back, Evan, which is what they needed before a score. Presbyterian runs a no huddle offense. Here's Del Vecchio Powell. Gets a block to midfield and drags the defender out to the 50. Chris Cromarty on the tackle. All of a sudden, one first down, one completion. Here comes that offense. You got to get a rhythm. You got to kind of, you're, you're on the road. You're in front of a big crowd at Campbell. You took the bus trip down yesterday. You're kind of getting your feeling, get your legs under you. Now a couple things could happen. The next thing you know, you feel more comfortable. You got that rhythm going. And it's showing so far in this drive. Hefley, two straight completions. Another play action. Hefley slings through the hands of his target. That's Jalen Witcher, who enters this game as the top receiver in FCS football with four touchdowns. And Jalen, just unfortunately for him, coming out of the top of his route, he slipped and fell to his knees. So while that ball may have looked a little high, it wasn't. He was just crouched down and just getting back up from the ground as the ball sailed over his head. Ren Hefley set a state record, 46 touchdowns at Bryant High School right next door to Pulaski Academy, two miles away. He knows Kevin Kelly's system well. Here's a delay screen. Open man, Rivera, inside the 40, now to the 35, and Rivera has the first down on third and seven. And the reason why that works so well, you had the offensive line out there pulling to get to the outside. You had a very aggressive defense getting up the field, and it was a great call by their offensive coordinator, Jeff Imamula of getting that screen game. Now you have quads at the top to the field, four receivers to the top of the field. So many options for Hefley. He moves that way. Pressure is face from Gwena. Flings to the sideline and finds a target. That's Jalen Witcher, his first catch in an eight-yard game. I tell you, Kevin Kelly's creativity offensively, yeah. it's a marvel to watch and something that the Campbell coaching staff even pointed out. Well, it is, and, and they know that they're going to see things they've never seen before, and that's why they, Campbell, the defenders have been told, hey, don't get mesmerized, play your game, play your 111th, but you're right, Evan. I mean, it's something that you just don't see, and they do it so well. Three Presbyterian drives to date, no points, and two turnovers as Delvecchio Powell beats Gwena to the sticks. And that'll be right at first down marker yardage. The linesman gives him a first down. So Presbyterian, you're in the red zone as we finish out this first quarter. And I liked the play before, that screen pass that got them a lot of yards to get into the position they are now. It's an easy to high percentage play. It gets your running back into space. It gets the offensive lineman to pull and lead the way down the field. A great call at the right time. A chance for one last play to end this first quarter for Presbyterian. Keep an eye on Kyron Turner, number three, waving his arms. He wants the football. Love the confidence of the senior from Orange Park, Florida. Three seconds on the clock. Hefley gets it off in time. A handoff here. And out to the 20-yard line, Presbyterian gains a quick three yards with Andrew Doss to end the first quarter. Through 15 minutes of play, Campbell plus 40 yards on the board and plus 21 points. Can Presbyterian respond? We'll find out right after this break on ESPN+.
Kevin Kelly's a popular man. That's Overtime Sports filming a documentary here in campus to watch every move of Kelly throughout his season. A man that draws a lot of attention. Now he has questions answered of his team, down 21-0. Ebbs and flows in every football game. The reason why it's the best game out there, in my opinion, is so much that happens, so many ups and downs. And Kevin Kelly knows that. He's won nine championships in Arkansas at Pulaski, Acad Pulaski Academy. And this is the reason why he's here head coaching at Division One. This is the best drive for Presbyterian so far. Ten plays, 55 yards. Hefley, a quarterback keeper, gets a block and is dragged down by Brevin Allen and Roy Yancey after a gain of three. And I like that play as well because, again, they ran trips to the near side, twins to the far side, spread the linebackers out, opening up and vacating the middle of the football field. Designed run all the way. Couple-yard pickup, third and manageable. Ren Hefley, the former walk-on quarterback at Michigan, now has Tyler Huff, the starter from last year. He catches the football, throws to the sideline, and incomplete. That's the dynamic of Huff and Rathley. They work together as quarterbacks, and something that Kevin Kelly loves is that dynamic between the two. Well, and that's the thing. You'll see Tyler Huff even more today. Tyler Huff, four TDs throwing. He's, he's caught a touchdown. He's rushed for a touchdown. So he is an athletic part of this offense, and you'll see even more of him as this game goes on. Third, fourth down conversion for Presbyterian tonight. They do not punt, and this team does not kick field goal. So fourth and five. Hefley to throw. Hefley out of the pocket. Hefley wants a man, tipped away in coverage. Campbell's defense, Mike Swain, his first career start. The freshman from Fredericksburg gets the stop. Yeah, and it's a great job. Brevin Allen, too, in there, the defensive end. You just shut everything down. When you think there's something there, there's nothing there. Getting pressure on Hefley there, and the, all of the defensive backs buzz out to the far side flat. Nothing for Hefley to throw to. Without Dorian Jones and Aaron Maddox at the safety position. Amazing. Campbell leaning on Mike Swain, DJ Charles, two young underclassmen getting the starts tonight. So Wiley Hartley returns to work. Haj Malik Williams battling a hamstring injury. Not available in this game so far. As here's the first handoff for Bryant Barr, his first rush of the season. He gains nothing. Barr's an electric back out of Greensboro that Campbell would love to have back in the rotation. You can see him right there just to see how stout he is. Big legs, gets through. He's able to keep his legs moving, runs through tacklers. You can't arm tackle this kid whatsoever. Got to make sure you wrap him up and take him to the ground. When these teams met in 19, Bryant Barr, two rushing touchdowns to the 28-14 win right there here at Barker Lane Stadium. Jordan Goko, the tight end in motion before the snap. And it's Barr again, stonewalled by Presbyterian's defense. Two rushes for one yard, setting up third and nine. And this is a good job by Presbyterian's defense. Sudden change, you know, turnover on downs, yes, but if they feel like it's a sudden change and getting, with Campbell getting the ball back, but the defense standing tall so far, forcing that third and long deep in Campbell's territory. One area Campbell mentioned coming into this game, they're focusing on winning third downs in this matchup. Key point for Mike Minner entering the week. Here's a third and nine to start the second quarter. Empty set for Hartley. Blitz upcoming, picked up. Hartley underneath the bar, tackled in open space, and a third down stop from Evan Murphy, the linebacker. He's out of Atlanta, Georgia. Well, that was a good job by Evan Murphy following the underneath receiver that ran that rib route, replaced the inside backer across the middle of the field. They disguised coverage a little bit. Great job across the middle of the field in the tackle there by Evan Murphy. The, sink, the safety drop back at the last second before they snapped the ball, the disguised coverage there, good job by Presbyterian getting the ball back for the offense. Here's the first punt for Campbell. Corey Peterson boots it away, the Austin P transfer. Here's a return opportunity for Kyron Turner, and he goes nowhere. That's Dante Crow, agent zero, also playing special teams on the tackle. Well, you know, and the one thing that helped out for, and we talk about it on the way um, when we come back, but one thing that helped out while they didn't score did Presbyterian, they got good field position in the last series.
Evan Budrovich with Peter Montemurno here from Barker Lane Stadium in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. The highest scoring team in the country, Presbyterian College. They score 75 points a game, yet to have a clear possession tonight. They get the football back after a three and out defensively, and now Ren Heffley goes to work. Heffley, 9 of 17 for 70 yards. Keep in mind, Peter, in his first two games, 575 yards per contest. Here's the backup quarterback, Huff, in motion. He takes the handoff, and Huff gains three before he's leveled. That's Keyshawn Thompson, the Camels' leading tackler on the stop. Keyshawn. Tom and Thompson with a nice, a nice tackle there. And again, Campbell came out, press man coverage, single high safety, allowing the four defensive linemen to make plays. Nothing there at all for Press's offense. Good job in the middle by the Campbell D. Thompson, the most improved defender, according to his D coordinator, Weston Glosser. Huff, he can throw from this position, slings it in completion. Huff was the starting quarterback in the spring for a 4-3 and three Presbyterian team. Former head coach Tommy Spangler retired after the year. Kevin Kelly gets the job, and he loves using both quarterbacks in formations like that. He does, and again, it's, it's a situation where he knows he has the athletes to make those types of plays. Showed it there. Just Campbell is all over the receivers right now in coverage. Presbyterian 2 for 7 on third down today, and the Blue Hose have converted just one fourth down. They must get to the Campbell 46 to move the chance. Heffley, pump fake, steps up. Oh, that's a horse collar tackle. Oh, it's not called to the 35-yard line. Huge sack. How is it not a flag there, Peter? I don't know. From up here, it certainly looked like it was a horse collar, like you said. Watch we'll Dre her Giles here, replay. here, 92 in the orange. Heffley's got enough and runs there. I mean, it's he had a hand. He his hand had a fistful of jersey. It didn't look like he had his hand inside the shoulder pads which is why they didn't call. So instead, a fourth and 11 for Presbyterian. They have attempted a punt tonight. They're backed up into their end zone, and Heffley booted it about 15 yards. Now he looks to throw on fourth and 11. Campbell not electing to blitz. Pressure still comes. Heffley across his body is intercepted. Campbell's defense with three turnovers tonight, and they get the ball in plus field position on the Malik great pick. The offense goes to work for Campbell. And they had quads to that side, so they have four receivers to the far side. Heffley rolled out to that side, the far side, to throw down the boundary, but a nice job of stepping in front, Malik Gate, for that interception, the third turnover so far again. Evan, they came to tonight with no turnovers forced, three already in the first half. Second career interception for Malik Great, the transfer out of Wake Forest. And now Whiteley Hartley returns to offense with a three touchdown lead. His team just had a three and out two minutes ago. Here's Julian Hill, the all-conference tight end in motion. Hartley looks the other way. Takes his shot for Sneed, who cannot bring it in. Had a step against his defender, second and 10. Joe Johnson hip to hip on the outside. Excuse me, not Joe Johnson. Jeffrey uh, Johnson. Jeffrey Johnson. No relation, but still <laughs> similar players. On the outside, hip to hip on Caleb Sneed, doing a nice job. They did have over-the-top help. Caleb Sneed did have a step just overthrown. How much of that is the timing of playing with a backup quarterback in Wiley Hart? Great point. It's, it's, it is an absolute timing thing, especially when you're throwing the ball down the field and you know it's a go route off the jump. Presbyterian brings pressure on second and 10. Hartley slings it. Sneed catches. Sneed is tackled by Johnson. Otherwise, an easy six for Sneed. Well, Johnson was an outside leverage on there, and that's why good receivers, as you see Snead right here, sees the leverage and decides to run that inside slant. He was outside, played him outside in. No one was there on the inside to help them. Just tripped him up. Or that, that's six for Caleb Snead. That is a butterfly shoestring tackle. <laughs> Double knotted there from Johnson to save the touchdown. Brian Barr returns to the ball game. His second carry. Barr putting on the dance moves. Gets inside the 30, and he's chopped down to the 28-yard line. Lamage McDowell had the bulk of the carries last week against Elon, gained 100 yards on offense. But a critical fumble in the fourth quarter helped Campbell lose that ball game. A new dynamic with Barr in the backfield tonight. It definitely is a new dynamic. It's also going to give motivation for Lamage McDowell to learn from. And that's what Coach Mike Minter does. He lets his players learn from mistakes they make. Five minutes into this second quarter, Hartley slings it out to Crow, escapes a tackler, 
And it's dropped to the 26-yard line. Good rally tackle for Presbyterian. Jalen Dubow, the freshman at Camden, South Carolina, on the stop. And having that offensive coordinator, Nick Grimes, for Campbell, we talked to him this week. He said, I need to get the ball into the hands of Dante Crow. I want to get more bubble screens. You saw it there. They know how dynamic of a player he is. They want to throw the ball to him more. Might see more of that play tonight. Sets up third and four. Campbell must get to the 22 of Presbyterian. Here comes a blitz. It's picked up. Hill, the reception to the 20, and he takes a man with him. Julian Hill, the largest man on the field in the PC secondary. My goodness, 6'4", 250, the senior. He's another next-level guy. We talked to the coaches this week. You can see him playing on Sundays next week. But he does a good job. He was smart because you'll see that the defense is blitzing on this play like you called, Evan. And Hill reads it right off the jump and turns right back to his quarterback for the big first down. First reception for Julian Hill tonight. Five different receivers, targets of Wiley Hartley. Hartley to throw, has a tipped pass. What a defensive play. Saving a touchdown there with his hands up. Otherwise, Jade Martin doesn't get hands on that ball. It's an easy six to bar. It's a nice job on the outside. They're bringing pressure, and that's what coaches do. They teach the blitzing linebackers or any of the defensive linemen, the ball's about to be thrown, stop your rush, get your hands in the air, and make that window of opportunity more narrow for the quarterback to throw through. Wiley Hartley, 8 of 11 for 79 yards. And a touchdown to Jai Williams tonight. He's the backup quarterback. Haj Malik Williams battling a hamstring injury. Not in the lineup so far. Hartley slings. Sneed receives. Sneed dances. Gets out of bounds. Gain of six. Sneed, kind of more of a shimmy shake, if, if you will. Just that's why defensive back, you got to watch the belt buckle of the receiver. Don't watch the shimmy shake on the shoulders. It will school you. Nice job on the outside to make sure you, he took a, a larger game but cut it down for a third and manageable. Put it on TikTok, Peter Montemurno. <laughs> Three receptions, 28 yards for Sneed tonight. I can't spell TikTok. There's an encroachment. And the flag is down. Might be a false start as well. Critical call yep. here from... Henry Johns, our lead official. Looks like they got the encroachment on the inside. That would be a first down as well. Yeah. Offside. Defense. Number 32. Contact in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty. Results in a first down. Jarrett Nagy, their senior linebacker, the leader of this defense. Fourth penalty for Presbyterian in this first down. It is just uncommon for this Presbyterian team. A 2-0 PC team that scores 75 points a game has been held scoreless. Now Hill in motion on the snap. Hartley out of the pocket. Hartley, a lot of options. Goes oh. up to Snead who drops it. Would have been his fourth touchdown of the season. Instead, it's second and ten. He worked around the quarterback. Monte Boyd there, a little bit of a size advantage for Snead. 6'4 versus six foot. And again, we talked in the ante. He likes to go up for the football. Lanky guy attacks it at its highest point. Nick Rimes mentioned in our meetings this week, he wants to throw the ball to Snead as many times as possible. Pretty good option here. As you see, Monte Boy, pretty good coverage there. Steps in front. The ball was thrown perfectly. Caleb Snead just couldn't come down with it at the one-yard line. Instead, second and goal for Hartley. Takes a shot the other way to Snead. Goes up in the air, and Snead takes it away from the defender for six. What a play. Caleb Snead going up for the ball. We just talked about it on the previous play against the defender with an incredible catch of stealing the ball away in the end zone. Battle for it up in the air, and that's what that size advantage will give you. Snead coming in at 6'4", 205. Jeffrey Johnson, you got mossed by Caleb Snead. <laughs> and he was right there. He was right there, but Caleb Snead with that strength, the ability, positioning with his body, and just stripping it out of the hands for the six. 19th career touchdown for Caleb Snead, and that was a beauty. Here's Isaac Riffle on for the extra point. And Peter, take a look at what Caleb Snead can do. Unstoppable on a jump ball. This is one of the reasons why the coaches love him at 6'4", 205, the redshirt senior here. Good job by Jefferson in front. Look at him just jumping in front of Jefferson, rips it out of his hands. Johnson, I should say, first down, uh, first touchdown by Caleb Snead. He has a little bit of that confident swagger as he walks towards his players, giving them the celebration for the six points. 
More football next on ESPN+. Plus. Hard work, a love for the game, is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, lives down here. Excellence, the will to compete, persists down here. This is the Big South, where winners are made. Football is the game of life, and it brings the community together. White, black, boys, girls. Flag, tackle. Football can revive communities. Anybody can play. That family value, that brotherhood, is everything. It's really what all it's about, is just having a good time and being able to play. There's never been a better time to play. We are not merely an institution of higher education. We are transforming lives and empowering students to become leaders. Leaders in our communities. In our state and throughout the world. Leaders in innovation. Leaders in service to our neighbors. Join our movement. Join our community. Join our mission. Lead with purpose. Lead with Campbell. It's bow time. The workday might be ending, but your family's hunger is still gearing up for the night shift. Now you could unload groceries, chop, dice, mince, preheat, heat, heat, slap around the smoke detector, and then celebrate with a big old pile of dishes. Or you could just drop a big bow box on it. Because when you can feed the family with 12 Supremes, Fixins, Biscuits, and tea, you can clock out and still spend some well-earned quality time with a delicious dinner. It's bow time. Campbell leads by four touchdowns, and Peter Montemurno, the story of this second quarter is Caleb Sneed. Caleb Sneed right here, look at this. I mean, 5'10 versus 6'4. Jeffrey Johnson has body position, but then the athletic ability of Caleb Sneed to go over his back, grab the touchdown, rip it out of Johnson's hands. Beautiful job by our camera crew to get this touchdown. Beautiful job by Caleb Sneed to score it. That's a big south high, fourth receiving touchdown for Caleb Sneed. Wiley Hartley took his chance not once, not twice, three, three times. times on the drive as Trevor Moss boots this ball away. And now the questions for Presbyterian. Where can their offense come from as Andrew Doss dives on the football inside the 15, and he's leveled right there. That's Ron Olson on the tackle. They call him Ron Burgundy, sporting the big mustache. Good night, San Diego. Well, <laughs> well said. Well said, partner. I tell you what, this is – adversity time for Presbyterian you know high powered offense they never punt but down four scores in the second quarter with eight minutes to go they have to figure something out this defensive backfield for Campbell have done a great job press coverage they're only getting pressure on the quarterback with only four guys the front four so this is a recipe that Mike Minter drew up that's working out and executed perfectly so far that pressure has resulted in three turnovers Heffley complete to Kyron Turner. His first reception gets a chunk of yards from the 13 to the 34. Nice gain of 21 to open up the drive. And I like what they did with Del Vecchio. Powell, the second, the running back, ran a circle route, ran all the way down the field to clear that. The, since they were in press man coverage, they had an open side of the field to run to. Witcher in motion, complete. Good misdirection to the 40. Still turning to the 44. That's Lawson Butchelder, the sophomore of Augusta, Georgia, his fifth catch of the season. And they're working quickly here. Ren Heffley goes to the outside, gets a nice chunk, chunk of change for a first down. Then you go inside to Lawson Butchelder, ran six yard in, another first down. Butchelder, two touchdowns in the spring. He has three touchdowns in the fall. Here's Powell on the direct snap, and Delvecchio Powell is leveled at the secondary. Man, big hit from Jonathan Jones, the junior to Jacksonville. And that's the thing, Evan, that I've seen with this defensive backfield. They have no fear getting to that first level before the running back hits the second level to make contact, get their shoulder in, and they play physical. Presbyterian on the ground, just 12 yards rushing. Most of that coming on this play. Halfway on second and two, slings it middle. Pass interference called on Campbell. Targeting Jalen Witcher that time with Levi Wiggins in coverage. 
Yeah, Jalen Witcher was about to go down the field and he was, he had, someone had a hold of his shoulder pad. We'll see on the replay who that might have been. Maybe Peyton Woolard. Pass interference, defense, number 22. Ball plays in the spot of the foul, first in. So Peyton Woolard called for the flag. And Woolard wasn't even close in coverage. He says, stop giving me fouls, I didn't commit. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's the second time he's been called for a and foul. And I tell you what, he would have been gone. Jalen would have been gone looking to break down the field. The defensive back held him up by holding him. Correction that could have been sick. It was on number 29. Evan, they heard you. I, they must have the heard me out here on ESPN+. Plus. It's not just the feet of them to us. It's Kudos. us back to them. Credit to our to crew Evan. here on ESPN+. Plus. Along with Peter Montemurno, Evan Budrovich here from Barker Lane Stadium in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. The highest scoring offense in the country, Presbyterian, gets a huge hole for Delvecchio Powell. He's inside the 30. Well, that works so well for Presbyterian for some reason. Campbell switched from a four down lineman to three down lineman on that play, and that made it, they had able to open a big gap for Delvecchio to run through. Powell, the freshman of the year in the Pioneer Football League this spring, churning his legs inside the 20, and an impressive gain of seven yards for Delvecchio Powell. Give him eight officially. Well, this game of football is a game of adjustments. Kevin Kelly has made some adjustments. Defense for Campbell has also made some adjustments. Again, they came out with three down linemen. They're still in that three down lineman set. Now they have four down linemen coming in. Heffley out of the pocket. So much pressure. Sneaks it to Powell. Positive yardage, Delvecchio Powell is trucked by Thompson to the 21. This is like a WWE fight tonight. Plenty of hard hits from the, the boys in orange. My goodness, Keyshawn Thompson from the middle linebacker position rolls out to the outside and places a gigantic hit on Del Vecchio Powell. Third and short. You see Kevin Kelly dialing up the offense. His son, Zach, is the receiver coach for this team. Presbyterian looking for its first points of the night and a timeout call by Mike Minner of Campbell. First charge, timeout of the half. Peter, what's Campbell. been the difference for Presbyterian on this drive finding success? Well, I, you know, what we've seen so far in this drive, Evan, they're picking up chunks. They're not going for seven points in every throw. They're taking chunks, middle of the field. They had that nice throw, that six-yard hitch, Lawson Bichelder, get him over to midfield, and now they're just picking up chunks with the run. Campbell made a change to their defense a little bit. They've exposed some weakness in the middle of the line when they made those changes. This game's about adjustments, and we've seen Presbyterian make some nice adjustments so far here in this drive. Mike Minner said the biggest key to success, you have to tackle to beat Presbyterian. How has his defense been able to stop the Blue Host so they're, far? They're, they're all over the place. They are all over them, like what they say, like white on rice. They are all over this team right now. They're running with them, and we talked about it in the onset. We talked about how that 53 and a third yards across the field of real estate, running sideline to sideline. And I tell you, this Campbell defense was ready to, for today. I mean, it's all about knowing what the X's and O's are, but you have to have the attitude to run with a team like this, and they've done a great job so far. Presbyterian offensively finding its rhythm in this second quarter after only gaining 70 yards in the first quarter. Ren Heffley, 12 of 20 passing for 99 yards. How can the passing game find some real estate against Campbell's defense? Well, I think, you know, continue to spread out Campbell's defense, which they do a good job of. It's just that Campbell is so fast, and they're not allowing Ren Heffley to sit in the pocket. So maybe roll him out more, because he, he does a good job of throwing on the run. Third and four. Presbyterian must get to the Campbell 17 to move the chains. Heffley looks left. Finds an option and is tripped up, but Shelder moving to the sticks. He fumbled the football and it's loose. Scooped up by Campbell and the fourth turnover of the night is recovered. That's Joe Johnson, the Penn State transfer on the recovery. Well, this defense has done an unbelievable job. You see, but Shelder trying to move forward to get more yards, knocked out from behind. And Johnson able to come up that Penn State transfer, like you said, with the turnover, another forced turnover by this Campbell defense. Unbelievable. Again, coming into tonight, zero turnovers. Tonight, four. All in this first half. And with this play being challenged. Of a fumble recovered by Campbell is under further review. We'll take a quick timeout. When we come back, the ruling here in Bowie's Creek. Campbell searching for its fourth turnover of the night.
The call stands, a fumble recovered by Joe Johnson, and Campbell's defense forces a fourth turnover over the night. Here's Wiley Hartley back to work on offense. Hartley to throw, finds Brandon Fights, the second-year receiver out of Florida who makes the catch. He's out to the 14. And Peter, how about the defense forcing another stop? Again, this is, you see here on the replay, with the, he definitely was still up. Ball was stripped out right there for the fumble. So Levi Wiggins gets half the credit, right, for the fumble recovery. And then, and then Joe Johnson, the lucky beneficiary, gets the scoop. But they're all around the football. They're rallying to the football. That's the difference with this Campbell defense today. Brian Barr back in at tailback, gets the handoff, breaks a seam to the 15. A huge hole for Barr as he sprints out to the 35-yard line. Gain of 21 for Barr. That's the explosiveness Campbell's missed in his backfield. Well, it really, it really is, and that's that's one of the things that Barr does so well. He, he carries that ball. I like what he does here. Technically speaking, when he gets to the outside, he has that ball in the right arm. He has that ball to the boundary side, so if any defender gets in his face and looks to knock that ball out you got the boundary to hopefully it bounces to the outside not a bounce so nice technical job by bar brandon fights his second catch of the drive spins off a tackler and makes his way to the sticks gain of nine and a half for brandon fights the sophomore from Al Adelmonte springs florida fights likes to fight for yards down the field picking up nine yards in that play second and short this is when you can do a lot of different things maybe haul one down the field Hartley goes right back to work off to Michael Jamerson sneaks to the outside in the Presbyterian territory and finally dragged down how about this day for Jamerson seven rushes for 65 yards in his second start and two touchdowns and two touchdowns Second start, great you were, job. You were egging me on with the two fingers, by the way. I You're didn't want hey, to two, two. step on you. I just had a two, two, two touchdowns. Two touchdowns for Jamerson. Just like this Presbyterian offense, going for two every time. Every time. Only one punt all season. It was a quarterback punt in its own end zone in the second quarter. Wiley Hartley gets the start. He's 12 of 16 passing. Feeds it off to Jamerson, who is tackled in the backfield. Excellent open field stop. Keegan Haloran, the redshirt sophomore from Fountain Inn, South Carolina. And the only thing I'm thinking about right now, if you were, if Kevin Kelly and, and the offense is back on the field and they're stuck with bad field position again on third down, it's third and long, do the quick kick. Nobody does a quick kick anymore. Do the quick kick. No one's going to be deep, so hopefully you can get a good punt and let the thing roll because you're, if you're not going to punt, you're losing field position all night, and that's why you're down 28 nothing. Second and 10 for Hartley, just inside of Presbyterian territory. Hartley pressured. He is dropped for the sack. First for Presbyterian tonight, that's David Kennard on the sack. Third and long for Campbell, and I mean plenty of distance on this one. Well, that, was, that was the first time that they were able to get through, really unabated to the quarterback. They did a nice job pinching on the inside, a little bit of a stunt, and then when Hartley stepped up, Kennard's right there to take him down for the sack. Nice job by the defense for Presbyterian running that slant to the upside. Having Hartley step up, good job by the D. That was Mason Lord who got past Danny Corbett, really put pressure on Hartley. Third and 18 on this play. More pressure. Hartley backpedals, finds fights at midfield. Fights, breaks the tackle. Fighting his way for a first down. A gain of 20 on third and 18. Oh, that was a beautiful play. Good job by great route. Great route on the inside, on the outside, I should say. Running to the inside was fights. Brandon Fights has been asking for playing time his entire three-year career, taking advantage of some critical time tonight. Two career catches entering this game. He has three in the second quarter. Hartley to throw. Takes his shot. Wants Kelsey. Has his man. A third passing touchdown from Hartley to Jalen Kelsey. Running in between coverage, double coverage. Monte Boyd and Keegan Halloran were there. But my goodness, he runs right through double coverage. It was a go route from the jump, delivered on point by Wiley Hartley for the touchdown. 48-yard pitch and catch to Jalen Kelsey. That's his first reception of the night. And Peter, seven different targets have made catches so far. Yeah, Jalen Kelsey's, th you know, second, se he only had two receptions coming in. And again, right off the jump, he runs to the end zone. Perfect pitch and catch. Isaac Riffle hits the post, and that sneaks through. What a lock for the kicker tonight. 
So, Wiley Hartley, your first career start. He's 14 of 18 passing. We'll see how Campbell can continue this first half when we return on ESPN+. Plus. Campbell leads 35 to nothing. Just under two minutes to play in this first half. And Wiley Hartley in his first career start, Peter, has found a bevy of options, including Jalen Kelsey on the 48-yard touchdown. Well, he knew there was double coverage on him, and he just ran straight through Monte Boyd and Keegan Holleran, who were there on in coverage for Presbyterian. And let's give credit to the offensive line, allowing Wiley Hartley to step in the pocket and throw the ball down the field. There's a fair catch on the pooch kick by Colby Smith. So Presbyterian entered this game scoring 76 points per night. They've been held to 152 yards. And so far, Peter, four turnovers offensively. Got key to the game. I mean, turnovers will change the complexion of any football game, no matter who you're playing against, no matter how, how, how high powered the offense is. Campbell's defense came ready to play. They diagnosed what they had in front of them. They didn't get mesmerized by the formations and the offense that is in the stats and the press clippings. They came in ready to play football in the first half. They've done a great job. Ren Heffley to throw. He's had a rough day so far. Finds Matthew Rivera and a chunk gain of seven. But you see right there, Evan, a nice chunk gain of seven, but Campbell's right there to make a tackle right away. And that's what, that's what you have to do in zone coverage. They played zone there. Now you have to do that in zone coverage. You're going to give up that catch, but you've got to make the tackle right away. Malik Great on the stop. Pressure in the face of Hefley. Interception by Thompson going the other way. And the fifth turnover for this Campbell defense. Keyshawn Thompson makes the stop this time. Just sitting there in center field, Keyshawn Thompson in the man coverage, reading the quarterback's eyes. Almost felt like a Tampa 2-type coverage when you have a linebacker, Keyshawn Thompson, back in that defensive backfield, watching the quarterback, waiting for something to come across the middle. Does a nice job of diagnosing that offensive scheme coming up with the interception. Campbell's defense in two games, zero interceptions, zero fumbles gained. That has quintupled <laughs> this week. That, I mean, it's just, you know, this is something that, uh, you know, you, you pray for as a defensive coordinator when you're, you're thinking about a scheme, how to stop a high-powered offense. Now you're up 35 nothing, and you're five, five turnovers going in to that Hartley halftime. starts from his 30. There's a catch of the 21. That's Austin Height. He gains nine. Eighth different receiver for Wiley Hartley tonight. They sure have turned the tables. I mean, 
Presbyterian's offense came in tonight with 23 different people touching the ball so far tonight. And now you're seeing that same type of thing reciprocated on Campbell's side. Final minute of the second first half. Campbell's outgained Presbyterian by 100 yards. The score much different. Hartley pump fakes, wants Julian Hill one-on-one, -on -one, and the tight end brings it in. Back corner of the end zone for Hartley's fourth passing touchdown. Wow. W what else can you say but wow on a play like that where you've got Julian Hill, the 6'4", 250-pound senior. And you see right here on the near side boundary, man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Hartley has a ton of time to throw. Easy throw to make when you have that much protection. And in coverage there for Presbyterian, number 13, Brandon Desi wasn't able to come down with it. First career touchdown for Julian Hill. And did you see his quarterback, Haj Malik Williams, on the field? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> everything is going right right now for Campbell. Everything is going right. Wiley Hartley, four passing touchdowns, only four incompletions in this first half. Here's Riffle on for the extra point. Said that a ton tonight. And it's 42 to nothing with 51 seconds left in this first half. Good decision to go with Wiley Hartley in this first half, Peter. It, you know, it really has been. He's been poised. He's been calm. And this is the first action he's seen all year. And he's done a great job with understanding the offensive scheme. And we talked to Nick Grimes this week, Evan, the offensive coordinator for Campbell. And we asked him if, if Malik isn't, or Haj Malik isn't going to go, are they going to change the game plan if Wiley comes in? They said, no, it's going to be the same game plan. So that's a comfort for your offensive coordinator, and it's a comfort for your offensive scheme, knowing that there's not going to be a step back by using a different quarterback. And Haj Malik Williams tried to go. He's had that nagging hamstring all week. He was out of Tuesday's practice. But when you have the skill level of Wiley Hartley to step in, you see what could happen here, 42-0 with 51 seconds left to go in the first half. This is the most points for Campbell in opening half since 2018. That was against Wagner College, a 49-point first half. Still a chance to do so with 51 seconds to play. Fair catch call by Presbyterian, and the Blue Hosts start at their own 25-yard line. Kevin Kelly mentioned to us coming in, this is a litmus test for his team to see how they face a scholarship opponent. Presbyterian, a non-scholarship team, a club that has been a bit overmatched in this first half by the physicality of the campus. Yeah, they, they have been. I mean, they're, and Kevin Kelly also knew they were faster, stronger coming into this game was the, the, game the defense for Campbell, seconds. just really both offense Five, and defense. Uh, but you're right, Evan. It's, it's one of the things that, that Kevin Kelly knew is a litmus test, and it, it's been a tough road for them in the first half. I'd love to be in that locker room in, the, in halftime to find out what adjustments they're going to make to try to make some semblance of a competitive game here in the second half. This team will not go down without swinging. Presbyterian scores 75 points a game as Ren Hefley returns to work. He's 14 of 23 passing. His 24th pass attempt is a shot down the field, intercepted by DJ Charles. That's six turnovers for this Campbell defense. DJ Charles just playing deep center field. I looked at that before the snap. They had single high safety, man coverage underneath. As you see, Hefley stepping up there, throwing down the field. Charles just coming across in the safety position, executed to perfection. How about Watch Charles, the, the converted hands. running back, plays receiver to make the pick at the safety, and, and now he's got the, the he's dollar got the cash chain. money on his shoulder. I mean, everybody wears that robe, cash money, when they do something great here at Campbell. So. There it is, cash money, turnover chain coming on, looking at the camera, everything going right. That's some NIL type For of Campbell. money he's got on his back <laughs> as DJ Charles' his first career start gets the pick. We mentioned 49 points and a half. That's not out of the equation here with 44 seconds left. Hartley is 16 of 20 passing. 16 of 21 as that's complete. Austin Height on the tip drill brings it in. A cash robe isn't an NCAA violation, is it? I don't, I don't think it is. No, it could be sponsored by some cash corporation I haven't heard of yet. <laughs> Austin Height with his second catch of the ball game. Hartley with pressure. Ziggs past the defender in Murphy. Takes his shot down the field for Height, who holds on to the football inside the 20. Austin Height, are you kidding me? Da-na-na-na. Da -na -na. I mean that, he did not stop running. Almost turned around in a pirouette and comes down with the football. 
We have a timeout here. We're ruling on the field. A completed pass. It's under further review. So, Peter Montemurno, yeah. how did Austin Height hang on to this football? I mean, just watching the ball, look at it, um, turned around, kept running, stopped with hands in his face. The ball doesn't look like it has hit the ground at all yet. Still has it. He's got it. That oh is my a reception. gosh. That is a reception. It Unbelievable. Hit, hit the defender twice in Monte Boyd, and somehow Austin Height brings it in. That's and his third Monte reception. Monte Boyd had a hold of his face mask, so he wasn't even watching the ball into his hands. He just kind of felt it. How about that? Monte Boyd, number 30, in coverage. There's the face mask. his face mask. He's not even watching the ball into his bread basket. Feels around. He's on his back. Incredible. Talk about concentration. He lost his face on the play. Then it hits Monte Boyd. Every limb involved for Austin Height, who somehow brings this in. That is literally a Sports Center highlight. That is some catch. And Austin Heights pleading his case to the officials. He wants that 43-yard catch. I mean, we're, we're, unless there's an angle we're not seeing, Evan, from up here, that is a catch from what we saw. Good job by the camera crew. Good angle there. Yeah, I like the pol I like the politicking right there in front of the refs and pleading your case. And the camera doesn't lie, obviously. That sure as heck from up here looked like that was a catch. The offense is ready. They're set up inside the 20-yard line, searching for a ninth touchdown drive. Here's the official ruling. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Campbell. Clock will start. The clock will start. I take them. Campbell does have two timeouts at its disposal here. Gain of 43 officially to Austin Height. Wiley Hartley looking for a fifth passing touchdown. Bobbles the snap, slings it to the end zone, and tipped away in coverage. Excellent job, saving six. That's Jaden Martin. We do have a flag in the backfield. They've been holding by the offensive line here, but yeah, still, like you said, a great job. Holding, offense, number 71. 10-yard penalty, still first down. Isaiah Birch called for the hold, the fifth-year senior out of Marion, North Carolina. Critical play by Jaden Martin defensively, the Presbyterian leading tackler on the season. Yeah, he did a nice job of stepping in front of the receiver and knocking it down, just keeping the play in front of you, and then he knows he has great closing speed, close quick on that ball, knocked it down, first and long. Ten seconds in the half. Hartley takes his shot, flings it up, wants Crow, who did not find the football. Four seconds remain. I am not sure if Crow... Lost it in the lights, didn't know where it was, but he didn't have his hel helmet turned around looking up at the ball. Only the fifth incompletion for Hartley tonight is 18 that? of 23 for 242 yards in his first career start. And you got to give credit, Evan, to the 325 average offensive line up front led by Mike Edwards out there, the big left tackle. Campbell taking one more shot before the half. Hartley, as time expires, slides out of the pocket. He must go to the end zone. He does. Has a man. Height. Bobbles. Catches. Oh, That's a touchdown to end the first half. Unbelievable. That is un pass two catches like that. Defense. Absolutely pass interference. And Austin Height with his second fantastic play of the half. We thought that the first catch was Sports Center worthy. This catch was sports center worthy. My goodness. Unbelievable concentration, Evan. Not only to catch the ball, but to keep your feet inbounds in the end zone to come down with a touchdown. Unbelievable. Officials conferring here. Every scoring play is reviewed. And there's all, all a bunch of garbage and trash in the middle that Hartley had to navigate through. He was forced out of the pocket, heaves it down with no time left in the first half. Very fitting, Wiley Hartley's first career touchdown pass was to Austin Height. His most recent goes to Height to close out this first half. Riffle completes the extra point, and that's Campbell's largest first half, 49 points, tying a program record through 30 minutes. When we return, the halftime report in Bowie's Creek, 
And as the Camels lead by a solid 49 at halftime. Welcome back to Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. Hercules Tires is the proud sponsor of the Big South Conference. For the best tires, visit HerculesTires.com. Unless you're Gaylord the Camel, got to be careful of those fans in attendance tonight, giving him a challenge in the student section. Welcome back inside the booth here with Peter Montemurno, Evan Budrovich. We promised you offense. Well, it came from Campbell tonight. 49 points in the first half. Wiley Hartley, five passing touchdowns. What impressed you most about this offensive performance? Well, what impressed me most is they, they kept it simple in the beginning. They just really used the scheme they've been using the past couple weeks, even with a different quarterback, and they've executed to perfection. Great offensive line play by this front five and giving Hartley the chance to throw the ball and let the skill guys play football. Then defensively, Campbell forces five turnovers, holding Presbyterian under 200 yards of total offense. What was key to their success? I think the key to their success is flying all over the football field and not getting mesmerized like we talk about in the onset of this broadcast by the, the exotic schemes and the formations that was brought by Presbyterian. And they have just played football. Athletes have been tackling and running all over the field. The pursuit of this defense has been the key. And finally, Austin Height, who had one catch entering this game, he goes for 87 yards in the final second quarter. How about his impact out off the bench? I, I mean, it, it's been unbelievable. He makes a catch without looking at the football. He had a face mask being pulled. And then the second catch, he's falling to his on his back, and he's bobbling the ball like a hot potato, and he comes down with a touchdown. Could be a sports center moment for him. Baked potato, put some cheddar cheese on it. It has been a delight to watch this game tonight. When we come back, more from Barker Lane Stadium as Campbell leads 49-0 at the break.
Hercules Tire is the proud sponsor of the Big South Conference. Ride on our strength. Peter, some first-half highlights from Bowie's Creek. We mentioned offense coming in. How about Campbell's ability to slow down Presbyterian's top offense as Ingles, also a sponsor of the Big South Conference, in our broadcast tonight? Speed. Speed, speed, speed. And, and you've seen the athletic prowess of this defense for Campbell. And they've done such a good job. You see here, I mean, they've, they've done a great job just getting after the quarterback with just four defensive linemen. That's the key, Evan. Michael Jamerson with the opening rushing touchdown. He gets his first career start. And then from there, the offense just kept going and going and going. And the defense here, I mean, Heffley coming in. I mean, it's uh, just the mistake there. Some mental mistakes, physical mistakes, pre-snap mistakes. And then Campbell is just taking advantage of them all. Michael Jamerson with his second rushing touchdown. Here's Ren Heffley looking for success and Roy Yancey there for the sack. Well, a defensive team does a great job when no one's when no one is open down the field, and that's why sacks are created. Heffley was backed up towards his own end zone. Here's a sack for J.T. Whitmore, and then off the punt, Hartley takes his shot, finding Jai Williams for six. And you see the patience by Hartley there. Steps into the throw again, getting a lot of protection by his front line. Mike Swain in his first career start with a stop on fourth down. It was a rough day for Ren Heffley. He's sacked again. That was one of four sacks for Campbell's defense. There's Kayla Snead climbing the ladder and pulling that ball away from the defender for the touchdown. And then Jalen Kelsey gets involved in the action. That's a 36-yard touchdown. And late in the half, how about this reception? Julian Hill with his first grab. Once again, the defense just stepping up, making plays. Nice interception there. Safety over the top. And then Austin Height, not one crazy catch. He follows it up five seconds later. Whoa, I'm, I'm unbel too, too hot to even see right there. Too hot to even look at. What a great catch. We'll have more highlights coming up after this break on ESPN+. Plus.
Ingles, a proud sp sponsor of the Big South Conference. Visit Ingles today to see what you can save. This broadcast is also brought to you by Sunbelt Rentals, a presenting partner of the Big South Conference and also part of our Sunbelt Rentals starting lineups. First Citizens Bank, another proud sponsor of the Big South. And, of course, because we love all of our sponsors tonight, the Selfie Cam. First half stats, Campbell dominating in total yards, and Peter forcing five Presbyterian turnovers to the top scoring team in the country. You know, that's the difference. You, know, you see with a team that doesn't punt, the team that doesn't really care about field position if they don't punt, so five turnovers is going to put you in a deep hole early on in the football game, and Campbell is taking advantage of every single turnover that they've had on the field tonight, and they have just played with more confidence and more momentum as that first half came to a close. And who knows what we're going to see here in the second half, Evan. Uh, can Presbyterian come back? Of course they can. They've been able to score a lot of points the first two weeks. They're going to make adjustments. There's going to be some success that they're going to have in the second half. It's going to be another interesting half of football coming up. We'll have more after this on ESPN+. Plus. What a performance by sophomore quarterback Wiley Hartley, his first career start. All he's done is five touchdowns to only five incompletions tonight. No interceptions and playing like a senior, not a sophomore, playing like a senior. He has a lot of help from his offensive line, again, led by Mike Edwards, Matt Price, the center, Isaiah Birch, the guard, Tyler McKellen, the right tackle over there, 
and Danny Corbett. I mean, they, they've done a great job to give him time. And when they run the football, the line has done a great job to create holes. This offensive line, they're strong. They're fast. They're climbers. They get up to that second level to clear space for the skill guys. Hartley starts his day off with a couple of rushing touchdowns, then lets it fly to his target like Jai Williams. And you, and you see the skill there. You see the patience. He knows where his receivers are. He knows that Caleb Sneed has an advantage in height, and he makes great decisions stepping up. Look how much time he has to throw down the field. And a great catch there. Hartley with his fourth passing touchdown this time, finding his shot to Julian Hill. And then, of course, the biggest play, Peter, how about the re two receptions by Austin Height to end the half? I mean, that in the same series, I mean, the same possession, that was something else. that You don't see a lot of Austin Height production in the Campbell University football games, but you might see more moving forward. Austin Height stole the show in that first half, and you see Haj Malik Williams, his quarterback, right by him. It looks like this is Wiley Hartley's game to continue. What's impressed you about Hartley tonight? His patience. And I think his leadership in terms of, like you said, Evan, he's a sophomore, but he's really playing like a senior in his first start, which shows that he was prepared, which shows that he has confidence in his offensive line. He doesn't have to worry about pulling the ball down and running. He can watch routes develop. He understands the defense. He's making his pre-snap reads. So all of that shows in the body language when you're holding the football in the pocket. You know what's about to develop. You know what you can see in front of you. And then you make your decisions. And five touchdowns later and 49 points later, Campbell is on their way. But there is 30 minutes left to play in this football game. One thing we've seen from Presbyterian, they can score the football 75 points per game. This is a team that does not punt. They go for two. They do not kick the football. That theory will be tested a bit today. They love onside kicks. And here's the first one of the night, Warner Bush on the kicking duties. And Acha Mbanwe as well. Here's Mbanwe on the kick. Beautiful onside, recovered by Campbell. And they get excellent field position to start the second half. And I think, Evan, it started. The tone was set by Campbell winning the toss and deferring to the second half. So they're giving this high-powered offense the ball to start the game, even though they won the toss. And that's Coach Mike Minner saying, you know what, I have confidence in my defense. Let's set the tone. Let's do a three and out, or technically a four and out, get off the field, give the ball to the offense for them to score. And it worked to perfection. Wiley Hartley with five touchdowns in his debut. Hands it off to Michael Jamerson. Huge hole into the Presbyterian secondary. And Jamerson sprints up the numbers during the 30-yard line. An explosive start to the second half. A flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. Down to the 33-yard line. Holding. Oh. Number 79. Hurts for the foul. First foul. Yeah, they got the center, Matt Price, there on the hold. Presbyterian was bringing a lot of defenders there in the box. They had about eight guys in the box trying to attack. And when you when you, you live by the blitz, you die by the blitz. When for running back and get to the second level in a blitz without being touched, you see a long run like that. Although there may have been a reason why he was able to get up there so quickly. Matt Price on the hold in the middle of the field, first and 20. Presbyterian's defense gashed this week after allowing just three points last Saturday against Fort Lauderdale. Bit of a different test here on Saturday night. The Campbell offense that's marched 367 yards down the field. Hartley on first and 20 sends Jordan Goko in motion, the tight end. Gives to Jamerson. Sets the edge on a block by Corbett. Jamerson jukes the defender and gets out to the 41. Gains half of the penalty yardage back. Colby Smith on the tackle. Well, and we got an injured Campbell in the middle of the field. Had helmet bucket was off. Looks like Isaiah Birch just getting up on his two feet. That helmet came off, so he has to come out for at least a play as he trots off the field. And Ezekiel Williams, his backup number 67, trots into the game. That's one luxury Mike Minner mentioned entering this game. The depth of his yeah. team is really tested this week. Yep, that for, for sure. And you've seen guys that haven't played at all this year step up and big, a big play, make big plays tonight. Hartley to throw. Tipped, nearly intercepted. Colby Smith almost had his second pick of the year. Setting up third and long. 
Yeah, Jordan Goko was there. Didn't look like that was, there was good timing there. Goko kind of had his head down on that pass. Third and long here for Campbell. So Presbyterian coming out of halftime, forcing Campbell to a third and long. A lot of pressure that Presbyterian has put on, as you see the replay here, almost intercepted. And Smith knew it too. He wanted Absolutely. to bring that football in. The Danielsville, Georgia product. They brought a lot of pressure coming out of halftime, has Presbyterian forcing this third and long. Hartley on third and 17, escapes the blitz, slings it to Goko, who beats the tackler, and he's gone. 60 yards to the house for Jordan Goko. That press man coverage, Colby Smith on the previous play, almost had an interception there. He was called to be in press man coverage as Goko gets it right there, right in front of him. Colby wasn't be able to bring him down, tried the shoestring tackle as Goko gets into the end zone for another six yards. Press man coverage does not work for Presbyterian. Go, go, Power Rangers. No, that's maybe. old school. Maybe. I mean, I'll, I, I'm not going to. He's the Orange Ranger. I'm not going to. Oh, okay, I'll give you that. First I, career touchdown for Jordan Goko. Here's Isaac Griffel on for the extra point. Evan Budrovich and Peter Montemurno here. Early action in the second half as the extra point is good. We'll take the timeout. Campbell leads by 56. Offense having a good night here in Booze Creek. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Big things are happening this year across the South, from the mountains to the coast. The fast are getting faster. The strong are getting stronger. And the best is getting better. Get ready to raise your expectations. Get ready for something big. Ingalls, a proud sponsor of Big South Football. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road, helping you reach your goals. That's forever first. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Wiley Hartley in his debut start, six passing touchdowns, a new single game record in the program's history. As this boot is cleared out of the back of the end zone, and Presbyterian starts with the football. Evan Budjovic here with Peter Montemurno. As the Presbyterian Blue Hose look to settle themselves down. This was a litmus test for the program entering in. There was some chatter among the PC team, according to head coach Kevin Kelly. Could we compete against the scholarship football team? They've shown glimpses, but not enough with the six turnovers offensive. They, they haven't. And, and you wonder, you know, the scheme has done so well for Kevin Kelly. And he's committed to it. He believes in it. He understands there's adversity. There's times you're not going to win. I do not think one game is going to change his way of coaching football and definitely not going to change here in the second half. So both quarterbacks, Huff and Refley, are in. Huff gets the pass. He slings it outside. That's Matthew Rivera with first down yardage and then some. Rivera sprints into the secondary, and he's all the way to the 38-yard line. Creative play as Kevin Kelly pulls out the bag of tricks. You have the refs conferring here. You got a flag on the field near side. 
There was no foul for an eligible lineman downfield because the ball was caught behind the line of scrimmage. First Again, down, that's where period. Kevin Kelly's creativity right. can even fool an officiating that's crew. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Rivera does a nice job on the far side. He had a convoy of blockers on the outside. Nice, nice play. One of the best plays of the night so far for Presbyterian. That's the largest chunk yardage play of the night. 41 yards on the pitch and catch. Heffley motions out. Rivera, QB design run, and he is gobbled up. Campbell's defensive line all over it. That's DJ Jackson. Yeah, that was a great job of the interior of Campbell's line. DJ Jackson, the 350-pound junior in there, six foot. He doesn't take up one gap. He takes up two gaps. He's a tough guy to block and does a nice job getting off the block and making the stop on the planned run. Presbyterian entered this game scoring 75 points per contest. Searching for their first scoring drive tonight. Heffley scrambles out of the pocket, past the line of scrimmage. Heffley slides, and Johnson taps him there at the 34, setting up third and long. You know, why, why does he pull it down like that? Because he doesn't have anywhere to throw down the field. These defensive backs were stepping in tonight that haven't played at all this year because of injury to the starters, and it's the first time they're getting the snap tonight, have done a great job of keeping the receivers in front of them and making plays and forcing Heffley to pull the ball down and take off. Campbell's defense, they've had six tackles for loss, four sacks, and six turnovers. Heffley on the empty set. Third and long, Allen in his face. Brevin Allen drags him back to midfield. The fifth sack for Campbell tonight. Yeah, the big 265-pound graduate player, 6'4". I mean, he is a beast at the defensive end, end position to the, to the inside. He just muscles his way into the backfield, working against number 76, Keith Boyd, the tackle for Presbyterian. And Brevin Allen just uses the strength to get in there, and that, that's what's been happening all night, Evan. That's tough when a defensive end is 20 pounds heavier than the right tackle he faces. Yeah, I mean, you know, averaging 278 across the front is Presbyterian. It's tough against this stout defensive line of Campbell. Presbyterian does not like to punt. Fourth and 18, Heffley on the move. Let's it fly, passes tipped and Ooh. nearly caught by Turner. Great coverage to Marcus Harrington, a big time performance in the secondary. Very nice job to stay there again. They're hip to hip on these receivers all night long. Great coverages have been called as the ref makes a stop. We'll take the timeout as well. Campbell leads by 56 early in this second half.
Mountain Dew, a proud sponsor of the Big South Conference. Drink a refreshing Mountain Dew today. Got to drink the Wiley Hartley Kool-Aid tonight. Ten yards shy of a Campbell program record, 330 yards passing so far. As Michael Jamerson gets the carry, sneaks to the defense and hurdles a defender. Tripped up in the secondary. Gosh, Michael Jamerson getting up on Jaden Martin. Yeah, Isaiah Birch, the guard who was hurt in a couple plays before, came off the field because he lost his helmet. But they ran right behind him and Matt, Matt Price, the center, leaping over the defender, almost getting clear and landing on his two feet. But nice job by Jamerson to get to the second level. Michael Jamerson, a track and football athlete in high school, grew up in Flint, Michigan. You see the explosiveness. Here's a blitz. Jamerson runs right through it. And he's got the first down as Isaiah Birch pulled him across the line. Gain of four. And they're trying to run Presbyterian Jaden Martin off the corner, running some blitz, getting some pressure. They're bringing pressure to Campbell to try to disrupt something, try to get the running back Jamerson and the quarterback Hartley off their game. And they are just in such a rhythm right now, as Coach Mike Minner said that this week, Evan. This game is about rhythm. They weren't concerned about slowing the game down. Here, another blitz. Jamerson off right tackle. He stopped that time. Spins through a tackle and turns three yards out of nothing. Powering through this Presbyterian defense. Powering through that tackle of Jaden Martin coming up and sticking him in the hole initially. And then Jamerson does a nice job lowering his shoulder, keeping his legs moving as a good running back should. Pick up another yard or so. Michael Jamerson, a unique story, did not play in the fall of his senior year doing COVID as a high school player. Went to the junior college route. Nick Grimes asked his staff, we need a running back, and they found Jamerson late in the summer. He's a player. Wiley Hartley back to work, feeds it to Jamerson, gets a key block from Tyler McClellan, who takes his defender a couple extra yards. And that's a gain of seven. You can kind of feel it right now, Evan, with handing the ball off. And sure, they're getting back on the line of scrimmage quickly. There's R.J. Jackson, the receiver in the slot on third and three. Jamerson keeps. He has the yardage right at the sticks. Depend on the call coming here from the line judge. Setting up fourth and short. Remember, this is Wiley Hartley, the backup quarterback, getting the start tonight. He's thrown six touchdown passes. Now he looks for Campbell's first fourth down conversion of the game. A free snap on the encroachment. Takes a shot for Height, who, no, cannot bring it in. <laughs> However, they'll get the first down. And Height pleads his case. This is the Height show. This is the Height show right now. As he runs down the bone boundary. Getting congratulations from his whole entire team. 33. Five yard penalty. Results in the first down. Given what Austin Height has done tonight, yep. I love the decision there from Hartley to take a shot. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. And there's the replay right there. As you see, Height comes down. Oh, man. He just missed Brilliant it. He had field. his foot on the Complete white pass. chalk. It's under further review. We're going to take a look at it again. It looked like he came down with his, his right foot, Evan, on the white chalk. Didn't hit any of the orange in the end zone. But they're going to take a look at it. We showed you that first angle. That might be the best, the best view. We'll take a timeout, come back with the decision after this on ESPN+. Plus.
So the call is confirmed, out of bounds, incomplete. Here's your best look. Just out of bounds, too. It's like his toe hits the orange, but his heel hits the white at the same time. So incomplete. So it's a first down on the encroachment penalty. Michael Jamerson looks for a seam, and he has nothing. Jaden Martin, a busy man defensively for Presbyterian. He really is. Jaden Martin's having, having a great game tonight. He is flying all over the field, especially on the edge, coming in and minimizing the opportunities for Campbell's offense. Martin, five tackles tonight. Story's been Wiley Hartley offensively, slinging around 330 yards passing. Ten yards shy, breaking a program record set 12 years ago. Hartley looks left. There's a catch, and Austin Height right at the sticks, one yard short. So he's one yard shy of a program record. As Height finally gets his reception, he's got five tonight. As Height comes off the field here for this third and two. And we have the training staff for Presbyterian running over an injured Blue Ho player on the field. Yes. That's Jeffrey Johnson who's had a rough night guarding Caleb Sneed. He's down on the Campbell sideline. See him going out of bounds, tackling height, hitting his knee as he's falling down, and something happened at that point right there. Obviously can't. Not doctors up here, not sure what happened there, but he hit the ground with force and stays on his knees after that play. So we'll take the time out. Keep an eye on Presbyterian's Jeffrey Johnson when we return. So following the injury, Johnson gets back to the sideline. Campbell is ruled just short of the stick, so fourth and short on the way. I like to try to draw them off sides here. Jamerson the tailback, Presbyterian bringing the pressure. Campbell's earned three first downs on Presbyterian mistakes tonight. This is the first fourth down attempt for Campbell's offense. Presbyterian has gone one for six. Hartley gives. There's the first down as Jamerson turns to the 17. That is a sign of a patient football team that understands the situation. Fourth and one. Hartley tries to draw the defense offside with a hard count. Presbyterian discipline doesn't jump. Then they look back to the sideline to get the call. Easy call. Jamerson running behind Isaiah Birch and Matt Price for the first down. Michael Jamerson, 16 carries, 93 yards. He's emerged as the starting tailback with an injury to Bryant Barr and C.J. Freeman recovering from an injury as well. Hartley to throw. He has six touchdowns tonight. That is a tough catch right in coverage. And the catch is made. Dervon Pesnell brings it in and a gain of five. Yeah, Ola Salamano in coverage on that side. It's a bang-bang play. You kind of have to have the timing down in a play like that because the ball has to be thrown before the receiver gets out of his break. So the top of his route, that ball's already in the air. And does a nice job bringing it in for a short gain, second and six. Hartley slinging the ball around the field with success tonight. Nine different receivers. Finds a wide open Jackson who drops a touchdown. Would have been his 10th receiver. Hartley's pass incomplete. 
It's a tough one for a true freshman. Yeah, that was a blown coverage in the backfield. They almost brought everybody. They call that a wet. They call that a wet suit in college. We eat this stuff up on the defensive line, but they brought the safety vacated the area. That would have been an easy touchdown. Oh, did you see that kid over the fence? By the way, he knew it was a touchdown. He yes. jumped up and down and said, "Come on, <laughs> give him my seventh touchdown." By the way, Wiley Hartley has now set a program record single passing yards, 342. Can he add to the six total touchdowns? Inside or out to Pesnell over his head. Great pressure by Evan Murphy on the backside. Yeah, Evan Murphy did a nice job on the backside. To get, I think that's the first time I have seen Hartley on the ground tonight. Uh, wasn't sacked, but at least had pressure on the backside, forcing him to throw errantly. Campbell with a 56-point lead. Elects to go for it on fourth and six. Already converting a fourth down on this drive. You imagine R.J. Jackson will have a lot on tape to evaluate after that drop for a true freshman with a ton of talent at the receiver position. Oh, without question. Without question. Here they are again. Two by two set. Campbell must get to the eight-yard line to move the chains. Here's Caleb Perez in motion. Hand off to Jamerson. Breaks the tackle. Spins past Martin, and he's stopped. That's a fourth down conversion. Presbyterian gets the stop and the Blue Hose get the football with 6.17 to go in the third. And turnover on downs there by the Blue Hose doing a nice job preventing Campbell to get back into the end zone or putting any more points on the board. So small victory for Presbyterian to get the ball back into their hands of the offense. Peter Campbell's defense has forced six turnovers tonight, held the highest scoring team in the country to a donut. How have they done it? Well, they've done it by having a great game plan coming into today. By staying away from you know, being worried about the, the stats and, and uh, everything. But they played fast, Evan. They played fast, and they've gotten pressure on the quarterback with only four defensive linemen, and they haven't had the blitz once. New middle linebacker C.J. Tillman patrols the 20-yard line for Campbell as Heffley misses his target. Ren Heffley now 14 of 26 passing. He was searching for Jalen Jones that time. And and one of the quotes that that resonated with me this week when we talked to uh, Weston Glosser, the defensive coordinator for Campbell Evan this week. He said, we need to take the fight to them and show them who we are. And that's exactly what this defense has done tonight. A defense that allowed 35 points per game entering this one. Halfway on the shovel to Delvecchio Powell. Makes a nice carry of it. Takes a convoy of defenders with him. Delvecchio Powell turns nothing into a gain of six. But if, if you see on that play there, and Del Vecchio does a nice job of uh, getting big yardage there, second or third and short here for Campbell, uh, for Presbyterian, excuse me. But if you see Campbell's defense there, all 11 guys are around the football. I don't care what the talent is on the offensive side of the ball. When you have a certain attitude on the defensive side of the ball like that, you can play with anybody in the country. Presbyterian just two for 10 on third downs today. They led the country entering this game in third down conversions, 59% at the FCS level. Let's see what Ren Heffley can dial up on third and four. Heffley, stoic in the pocket. Pass knocked away in coverage. Busy day for Demarcus Harrington, his third pass breakup of the night. Harrington does a really nice job there with the pass breakup. Just they close fast on the ball. When I say they were playing fast, it's not because you're fast in terms of your actual speed but you're football fast. You close on footballs, you're heady, you're pursuit so well, and that's exactly what they did is a flat-footed Heffley there steps into the pocket, kind of stared down the barrel at his target and allowed defenders to close. Fourth and four, Heffley to throw. That is caught. Powell at the sticks, does just enough to move the chains. A five-yard conversion for number five. This Presbyterian staff is so high on Delvecchio Powell, all conference in the Pioneer League this past spring. Nice job on fourth and four. Yeah, he, he is hard to bring down. You know, he only goes 5'9, 190, but, but look at his bottom half. He is a big guy, and he's able to move those legs to pick up the first down. Heffley looks left, finds Powell. There's a trio of defenders, and he's dropped after a gain of two. And talking about this. Campbell defense, Evan. You know, there's an old adage in the game of football that a defender is his commitment to that defensive unit is the distance between him and the football at the whistle. And this Campbell defense has a commitment to each other, and you see that in the way they play. 
This after being outgained by Elon by nearly 150 yards last week. A challenge for Weston Gloucester's defense. They've stepped up to it. Now it's second and eight. Heffley with pressure is sacked and collapsed with the ball loose. And Campbell recovers the fumble. Their seventh turnover as Gabe Holmes scoops it up on the JT Whitmore sack. Man, JT Whitmore does a nice job as he's been doing all night long uh, coming in, backing up. And you see that great Lawrence Taylor-like play on the outside with that big arm diving for the quarterback as JT Whitmore gets around the right edge and gets in to the breadbasket of Ren Heffley, forcing, forcing that turnover. Turnovers are plenty tonight. Two fumbles lost, now three fumbles lost. Four interceptions for Presbyterian. It's been an ideal start for Campbell's defense. Danny Corbett sprints off the field, number 55 in the orange. Here's Dylan Ernie, the freshly named scholarship quarterback, handing it off to Michael Jamerson. He has taken bodies with him for a gain of one, a harder carry off to the right side. For what I'm seeing up here, Presbyterian saying, you know what, we're not going to. We're going to have to make them beat us with the pass. We're not going to make them beat us on the run in the inside, at least for the rest of this game, because they brought everybody in with a run blitz on the inside. And you had man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Let's see if they run some play action into the end zone right here. Campbell, 342 yards passing, 124 on the ground. As Hartley exits, Dylan Ernie enters the ball game. Ernie slings it left to Fights, breaks one tackle, and Fights drags himself to the 17-yard line. Turned a five-yard gain out of nothing. Fights lives up to the building of his last name. He just fights for yards every single yard. Every time he gets the football, he's entertaining because he just he slashes on the inside, dashes on the outside, picks up big yardage, gets hit, doesn't care, rolls off, picks up some nice yardage there on second down. New center Quincy Jenkins checks in, the sophomore of Lawrenceville, Georgia. Plenty of substitutes coming in. Here's a free snap for Dylan Ernie. Takes his shot to the end zone, and Pesnell cannot bring it in. That's one-on-one -on -one coverage with Monte Boyd. Talking with the ref there, saying, you know, he had his hands all over me. He didn't turn Outside. around for the football. Defense, number 48. Five results and a first down. It is a first down conversion on the penalty. Presbyterian having trouble in that department tonight. Six penalties. Four of them have been encroachments. Yeah, pre-snap penalties are a killer, and they, they set a head coach and the defensive coordinator off. When you have pre-snap penalties like that, that's more mental than physical. Ernie hands off Jamerson. Inside the 10 to the 9.5-yard line, Michael Jamerson now with 95 yards rushing. You know, the thing I like about Michael Jamerson is when he runs the football, he sticks his foot in the earth so quickly, and he gets up the field right now. He does not wait. He does not... He does not, he's not a soft runner. He really is fast, but he's powerful when he runs north and south. Jamerson out of Flint, Michigan, had the best fall camp of any tailback, according to his coach, Derek Summers. Dylan Ernie works out of the gun, trying to draw Presbyterian offside. Ernie awarded a scholarship this fall camp. He was a former walk-on out of Olympia High School in Charlotte. Back to Jamerson. Off his own offensive lineman, gets to the five, and he's bounced there, third and two upcoming. And he's a patient runner, too, Evan, as you look at him right there. I mean, the powerful running back that he is. He's also very patient. When you're six foot as a running back, you have vision that a lot of running backs don't have that aren't that tall. So he knows, what, he knows where his offensive linemen are. He knows the linebackers. He can see the entire field as he's sitting there in the backfield in that pistol formation that you're looking at right now. Uh, which gives him an advantage at six foot. But he's a very smart runner, as we've seen tonight. Sets up third and two. Final minute this third quarter. Jamerson totes the rock at the five. And a fourth and one upcoming. We've seen Campbell pound the ball in the second half on the ground. 100 yards rushing in the second half. And a test here on fourth and one. Okay, fourth and two. I'll give you the refs there. Probably a yard and a half, two yards. All right. That's fair. Tomato, tomato. That's fair. Potato, potato. There's Dervon Pesnell, one-on-one -on -one with Monte Boyd. Campbell's taking their shots a bunch tonight. 
resulting in six passing touchdowns. Quarterback pushes his tailback forward, and he's stopped short. Good fourth down stop by Presbyterian's defense. They get the football back. That's Alex Harriet on the stop. You know, those mesh point plays are very hard to run. I mean, a lot of timing, a lot of practice where the quarterback has the ball in the breadbasket of the running back and the quarterback's reading. Do I have to take it? Do I have to keep it? And the running back feels the pressure of that football, and they don't know if the quarterback is going to keep it with them or the quarterback's going to take it himself. So a lot of practice goes into that small little play that you just saw right there. A lot on the shoulders of Ren Heffley in this second half. He leads FCS football on passing touchdowns, passing yards, and points per game. Tonight, a little different story. No touchdowns and three picks. Heffley the handoff. Nowhere to go for this Presbyterian running game. That's Chris Cromartie on the stop. Delvecchio Powell lost a yard. Cromartie lost his bucket, too. He has to come off the field for one play. And I think he'd take Giles it after the tackle for loss. Yeah, absolutely. And Dre Giles checks in, backing up Chris Cromartie. All these guys on the defensive line, they, they're playing incredible tonight. They're flowing fast, and they're getting off blocks. Nine tackles for loss tonight. Make it 10 and a safety as Heffley goes down. Campbell's defense with Brevin Allen all over Presbyterian in this third quarter. He's been all over them all night long, and, and Brevin Allen just gets off the line of scrimmage fast. That hand is the dirt, gets around, oh, does a great job with his hands to get around Keith Boyd. A defensive lineman's most valuable asset is his hands. He does a great job with getting Keith Boyd's hands secured, throws him to the side, and gets into the end zone for the safety. So the score is 58 to nothing with 13 seconds left in this third quarter. Head coach Mike Menner mentioned his team needed to bounce back here on Saturday after a tough loss last weekend at home. How does this game translate coming up with the bye week for Campbell moving forward? Well, that's a great point. I mean, the bye week is going to give them a lot of confidence. They're going to watch a lot of film. The one thing that Mike Min Minter knows, and Mike Minter's been, a, you know, obviously very well known for playing in Nebraska, played in the NFL, played in the Super Bowl. The one thing he's going to say in film tomorrow, folks, great win, but nothing is ever as good as it seems and nothing is ever as bad as it seems. So let's enjoy the win, but let's get ready for the next opponent in a couple of weeks because we're not 58 to nothing better than Presbyterian. That's the message he's going to send. He wants to make sure these guys stay level-headed but remain confident going into the rest of the season. Here's Asha Banway on the kickoff. It is a true kick away. Dante Crow scoops it up at the 43, and he dives on top of it. Smart decision. Campbell football with 13 seconds left in the quarter. Yeah, you almost feel at this point of the game, Evan, you're in almost like a run out of the clock scenario. Feels very high school-like, absolutely. Yes, yes, without question. If you're Kevin Kelly in Presbyterian, this team the game clock to 11 seconds. comes back one, after a difficult one. loss, and they open Pioneer Football League play next Saturday. Yeah. How do you flip the script if you're PC? Well, you got to put this away. I mean, you, you may you, you want to watch film. You want to you want to diagnose. But on the flip side, Evan, like we said with Mike Victor saying, nothing is ever same thing. Nothing is ever as bad as it seems for Presbyterian. They're going to show some good things, but they're going to learn from what they did tonight and going into conference play. you got to win your conference to move forward, so that's one thing they have to make sure the season's not even close to over for them. Presbyterian picked fourth in the Big South Conference as Ty Good, a sneaky run to the 45-yard line. That's his first carry of the evening, and Good ends the first quarter on a first down. Ty Good looks good. I like what you did there. Well, through three quarters of play, Campbell likes its offense so far, a 58-0 lead as we go to the fourth. Football is the game of life, and it brings the community together. White, black, boys, girls. Flag, tackle. Football can revive communities. Anybody can play. That family value, that brotherhood, is everything. It's really what all it's about is just having a good time and being able to play. There's never been a better time to play. Hard work, a love for the game, is mandatory down here. 
simple sacrifice. A desire to be great lives down here. Excellence, the will to compete, persists down here. This is the Big South, where winners are made. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Hi, I'm Coach Mike Mentor, head football coach at Camel University. If you're looking for a new car, go check out my friends at Wilkerson, Chevrolet, Cadillac, Buick, and GMC in Sanford. Go where I go, Wilkerson in Sanford. Proud supporters of Camel Athletics. When your family gathers around a shakaroni pizza from Papa John's, you're sharing our biggest, most foldable slices with extra cheese and pepperoni. But you're also sharing way more. You're sharing the chance to graduate college, three meals a day, and a safe place for kids to learn and grow. Because one dollar from every shakaroni goes to charities people depend on. It's not just pizza, it's pizza with a purpose. It's bow time. The workday might be ending, but your family's hunger is still gearing up for the night shift. Now you could unload groceries, chop, dice, mince, preheat, heat, heat, slap around the smoke detector, and then celebrate with a big old pile of dishes. Or you could just drop a big bow box on it. Because when you can feed the family with 12 Supremes, Fixins, Biscuits, and tea, you can clock out and still spend some well-earned quality time with a delicious dinner. It's bow time. Start of the fourth quarter here in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. There's your victory bell. Campbell expects to ring that tonight, leading 58 to nothing through three. And Ty Good, his second carry of the half, is dragged down by a busy man. And Jaden Martin now leads Presbyterian with eight tackles. Good, the ball carrier. We see a third string quarterback as well. Dylan Ernie checks in, the junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina. No Haj Malik Williams so far in this game battling a hamstring injury. He rests up for Campbell's next contest at North Alabama, the league opener, in two weeks. And Evan, you see the depth. You know, all, the, all these people that are injured tonight, from the quarterback on down, defensive backfield, guys stepping up in big positions. And that, that's even more of a confidence builder when you're heading into conference play. R.J. Jackson with a three-yard catch. It's his third reception of the year. The freshman from Albemarle, North Carolina, the coaching staff says is the best hands of any freshman on the team, although he did miss a touchdown back in the first half. <laughs> That's saying something. A lot of these guys have come down with some pretty incredible catches tonight. Austin Height may be the player of the game with his catches. There's yep. another encroachment. Ernie takes his shot. Pesnell. Oh, my gosh, he got it. He mossed the defender to the five-yard line. Right on cue, flags Outside. on the play. Number 48, penalty is the line. First down. Roll the tape. How about that catch for Pesnell? Right on cue, my man. Pesnell comes down with a great catch. Defender didn't even turn around. Great concentration, eyes on the football. Boy, these look like all Americans, all of these receivers tonight. First and goal for Dylan Ernie. Hands off, Ty Good. Stonewall there, and a trio of tacklers in on the stop, including Fuda Shinkawa. He's from Little Rock, Arkansas, played for his high school coach in Kevin Kelly. Well, just watch it. The defender doesn't even turn around at all. And Pesnell falling to the ground again. Great concentration with the defender in his face. Great throw and catch. First two receptions of his career tonight against Presbyterian. Second and goal, good to the right side. And short of the end zone. Ty Good wants to join the touchdown party. Two rushes for Jamerson. Seven different players scored a touchdown tonight. 
That's amazing. That just shows the depth of this football team. Coach Minter and the defensive coordinator and the offensive coordinator, Nick Grimes, Weston Glosser, done a great job in preparation with this game plan and getting these guys ready with a great attitude. Ernie on the keeper. Does he sneak in? And he's ruled short. Fourth and goal upcoming. Both teams scuffling here in the goal line situation. Yeah, a little frustration setting in for Presbyterian coming into this game, flag down on the field. There's a lot of, lot of John going on down there in that scrum. A lot of John. Officials clearing this all up inside the red zone. Ian Hoover limping off the field. Looks like something happened to the bottom of that pile. Danny Corbett checking back into the game at guard for Campbell. Yeah, if you're, if After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 78 of the offense. 15-yard penalty. The down counts, fourth down. So with the penalty, Watch it at the end of the play here where it really comes a factor. You see the handoff there by Good getting into the outside. Just about to get into the end zone. Just tripped up before he can get in. Good needs to be better. See what I did there? Good, better, best. <laughs> Let's see what Campbell has in store. Fourth and goal from the 16-yard line. Ty Good stays in the game at tailback. Ernie. Takes his shot for the end zone. Pesnell can't complete the catch. And a fourth down stop for Presbyterian. I love the ability of Campbell to throw jump balls all night long. And, and with another quarterback who hasn't played all game, he comes off the bench cold and throws like he's been playing all night. Presbyterian gets the stop. They have the football, and we return from Barker Lane Stadium. Fourth quarter here in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. I want to focus on Austin Polson, the junior from Conway, South Carolina. He served five years in the U.S. Air Force, has returned to play college football, and such a guiding influence for this PC club. He really is. I mean, coming into tonight, the team leading receptions, but really the team leading character and leadership. And he served in the military for five years before now he's here playing college football. So first off, thank you, Austin Polson, for your service to our country and uh, something that your teammates 
are very, you know, they see you as very valuable to their team. So there's a loss of one on the carry. Polson, in fact, led a speech before the game on 9-11 this past yeah. Saturday talking about the values of serving your country, being yeah. bigger than the purpose. And Kevin Kelly, who rode on the bus down here to Bowie's Creek in a USA shirt, he loves the pride for his country, and Polson identifies that. Well, there's a passion, right? There's a passion. There's a major connection between Kevin Kelly and, as you see, Austin Polson right there, again, served in that military. And it's, it's something you, you none of us will ever be able to experience uh, understanding what it's like to be in combat, in, in war, out there on the front lines, and uh, coming back to serve and be a leader for your team is remarkable. Heffley pump fakes, now slings across the field, finds a receiver, and somehow makes the connection. Difficult pass to Tim Newman, the Charlotte product, out to the 20. Polson, in fact, married his high school sweetheart, Caitlin. He went out to South Korea for five years. She stayed here in the States. Had heard about Presbyterian kind of out of the whim, Looking through Google and finding out through the documentary that's following Kevin Kelly, he took the job at the school, called Presbyterian, and got himself a spot on the team as a walker. I mean, that shows you the type of person that he is, the type of, you know, the, the insatiable appetite for the next thing and uh, knows that he can be valuable to anybody that takes a chance in, on him. And, and uh, what a great story that is Austin Pulse. Austin Here's Pulse. a third and six. Hefley trounced by pressure, and it's picked off, searching for Polson. That's Joe Johnson, the interception. And Campbell with eight turnovers has tied a program record for most turnovers in the night. And you saw a nice job there by Joe Johnson. And that's like a textbook. If you, if you put an example in the dictionary, what does it mean to attack the ball at its highest point? This is how you do it right here with Joe Johnson, stepping in front of the receiver, getting up right now, attacking at its highest point, bringing it down before Austin Polson can come down with it. And a good turnover again for Campbell's defense. The average starting field position in this game is absolutely incredible. Campbell has started on average at the 43-yard line of Presbyterian yeah. on its drives, and here they are at the 40-yard line. There's certainly perks and also some risks of never punting and going for it every time. As an open space, there's a gain of five on first down, flagged down as well in the backfield. You know, and there was something very businesslike about this Campbell football team and how we spoke with. Holy offense, number 14, 10 yards from the previous spot, still first down. The holding on the tight end negates the play. When we spoke with uh, the head coach, uh, Mike Minter, and the defensive coordinator, Weston Glosser, and the offensive coordinator, Nick Grimes, there was a sense of professionalism, how they approached the game. And you just felt through just those conversations that this is a team that is going to be prepared for whoever comes to play here. Especially after a difficult loss, a one-point loss against Elon here at home as Chris McKay, the newly inserted tailback at a rally, North Carolina, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. So second and long of coming. You're right, Evan, especially after that one-point loss where they felt they could have won the game. They were in a position to win the game. And that's when you have to throw losses like that away. You'll learn from them, but throw them away, as Presbyterian will have to do this week. Toss this one in the garbage, start to get ready for conference play. Presbyterian in a critical lead stretch. They go to the league favorite Dayton this upcoming weekend and then host San Diego, the prohibitive favorites in the PFL. Yeah. As Chris McKay drags the defender out for two yards, Evan Murphy, another stop at the outside linebacker position. There's a conversation about could the success of PC's offense translate from non-scholarship football to the scholarship ranks. We've seen it at times offensively, but just not enough with the eight turnovers. Uh, I, you can't. If you have eight turnovers and you're not putting your team in a good position field-wise, it's a tough recipe for success. It really is. It, it happened in the high school ranks. He's going to continue it. He's consistent. He believes in it. Ernie looks for a misdirection handoff to McKay, and he is molly walked to the floor. The Big stop in the backfield. Presbyterian David Moses, the freshman of Columbia. How long were you waiting to drag molly walked out of the artillery there? Probably 28 years of my life. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here for it. I'm glad I'm here for it. So McKay dropped for the loss, Campbell on to punt, and McKay Taylor said, are you sure you want to give me the ball there, coach, with a little misdirection delay handoff? Instead, Corey Peterson, Campbell's 
first punt of the evening. I was going to say, how about that? Same number of punts as Presbyterian would have been hard to figure that out entering this game given the stats. It has a fair catch at the nine-yard line. Peterson flips the field with a 40-yard punt. We'll take the timeout. Campbell cruising here at home on ESPN+. Plus. Jackaroni pizza from Papa John's. You're sharing our biggest, most foldable slices with extra cheese and pepperoni. But you're also sharing way more. You're sharing the chance to graduate college. Three meals a day. And a safe place for kids to learn and grow. Because $1 from every Shakaroni goes to charities people depend on. It's not just pizza. It's pizza with a purpose. Hi, I'm Coach Mike Mentor, head football coach at Campbell University. If you're looking for a new car, go check out my friends at Wilkerson, Chevrolet, Cadillac, Buick, and GMC in Sanford. Go where I go, Wilkerson in Sanford. Proud supporters of Campbell Athletics. It's bow time. The workday might be ending, but your family's hunger is still gearing up for the night shift. Now you could unload groceries, chop, dice, mince, preheat, heat, heat, slap around the smoke detector, and then celebrate with a big old pile of dishes. Or you could just drop a big bow box on it. Because when you can feed the family with 12 Supremes, Fixins, Biscuits, and Tea, you can clock out and still spend some well-earned quality time with a delicious dinner. It's bow time. In the last 10 years, Emerge Orthopedics has really been on the forefront of doing orthopedic urgent care. Uh, we realize that a lot of these accidents happen after hours and patients want to get seen and get diagnosed and get taken care of. Emerge has a number of orthopedic urgent cares throughout the triangle and some of which are open seven days a week, open till nine o'clock at night. And that's been a huge benefit to patients. Patients routinely give us compliments on that and the care they receive there. The Campbell University Marching Band is also a dancing band tonight here in the fourth quarter. They're rocking and roll with a 58 point lead. I'm glad there's a camera in our booth right now. Oh, there is. I'm just glad our director didn't cue it up there. <laughs> Wendell Suggs teeing it up. Charity Kyler probably ready to put us on blast oh, on social media if she could. Thanks to the hardworking crew here on ESPN+. Plus. Ryan Heffley slings and pick six. Going the other way. Demarcus Harrington, have yourself a night. Oh, Demarcus just stepping there in that little hook to curl zone there. Zone coverage just stepping in, watching the eyes of the quarterback, and boy, a free-for-all here tonight for this Campbell defense. That's C.J. Tillman jumping in front. Him and Harrington have been everywhere on this defense. That's the ninth turnover for this Campbell program, a new record for single-game turnovers. Wear that turnover chain with pride, C.J. Nice job getting in there and getting into the end zone. C.J. Tillman out of Rockingham, North Carolina with the pick. And the onslaught continues. Extra point makes it 65 to nothing. Rough Ooh. night for Ren Heffley tonight. Gives a touchdown away to Campbell. And they lead by 65 as we send you to break on this pick six. Yeah, just looking at the quarterback's eyes, C.J. does a nice job of getting into the end zone. Tillman and the Camels cash in with the pick six.
Campbell dominating here in the second half. A 65 to nothing lead. Peter, take this completely from what you've seen tonight. You wash it out, you get ready for the next game. Yeah. What can Campbell do to replicate this success in two weeks against North Alabama? Yeah, you got I mean, the one thing you worry about with a bye week is malaise. You know, you, you're off two weeks. It's not the same schedule. Things are a little different. It's not a majorly heavy practice week because you don't have a game this week. But you got to stay mentally focused. Still watch film. Watch film of the, of the team that you're going to be playing next. Uh, start to be mentally prepared. Don't go away from this saying we're the best team in the country right now. Just make sure you st keep this in perspective and make sure you have a two weeks of, of mental preparation. And then the physical physicality starts again uh, a week from tonight when they're getting ready for practice the following week uh, to get ready for that conference foe. C.J. Tillman with the pick six. That's nine turnovers for Campbell's defense tonight. Breaking a record that, that goes back quite some time. 2009 against Moorhead State, the last time that Campbell had eight turnovers in a the game. Their first safety in three years as well. It was all part of this second half barrage on defense. Hefley backpedals on the screen, finds Rivera. A lot of space out past the 30. He gains seven. Ren Hefley, 136 yards passing tonight. The five interceptions detrimental to his offense. And you're still seeing speed by this Campbell defense. I mean, they're still coming out, single high safety. They're still playing press man coverage. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing such a great job across the front. C.J. Tillman is, is doing a great job here on the field. He's running sideline to sideline, full speed. Hefley, plenty of time. And misses his target. Tillman was tiptoeing his way back, searching for a second pick. You see Hefley right now, just the body language is, you know, his, he's kind of flat-footed right now. He doesn't have that pep. Uh, but playing, playing quarterback right now, it's been a long night for him. Looking up at that scoreboard, seeing his team down 65 to nothing after just two weeks ago, putting 83 points up on the board and throwing 10 touchdown passes. Ren Hefley knows this offense better than anyone on Presbyterian's team. His brother played for Kevin Kelly in high school. He grew up in Little Rock, Arkansas, has a great understanding of the offense. Had a tough time tonight against Campbell's defensive front as Hefley on the QB draw on third and three gets enough. That'll move the chains. The one thing that has impressed me about this defensive line tonight for Campbell, you know, you talk about Brevin Allen, uh, Chris Camardi, these guys are not only strong physically, but they play the game fast. They get off of blocks well. And that, that is something that a defense needs to be spectacular. And this defensive line does a great job of getting off their blocks. Hefley out of the pocket, flings it to the near side. There's a catch. Jalen Witcher, the top target entering today's game, fourth catch of the day. Matthew Rivera with a quiet 100 yards as well in the second half. Yeah. After Presbyterian scored 152 points in two games, their offense has been stonewalled. Six and a half minutes to go in this fourth quarter. Hefley finds a target and dropped behind his intended target, Lawson Pachelder. The offensive line gave Wren pretty good time there to find a pocket and let the routes develop. Chelder was there, but that throw, that throw was far behind him. Halfley with four receivers to the top of the field. Very unique formation here. Yeah. As receivers are shifting back and forth on third and eight. Halfley, time, escapes. Hefley on the move, out past the 40, and he is short of the sticks. Tillman on the stop, fourth and two upcoming. And C.J. Tillman, he can run fast. He's playing the middle of the field now. He's barking out the calls, getting people lined up, and he's making plays. For a guy that isn't on the field that long or that often, he is really playing like it's the first quarter right now. Went to Richmond High School in Rockingham, North Carolina. An underrated recruit, Mike Minner, saying we stole him in the recruiting process, and he's making plays yeah, with that surely, pick six tonight. Absolutely, making plays and still playing with some fire. Eighth fourth down attempt for Presbyterian. 
is incomplete, nearly picked off as well. Searching for the slot receiver that time and missed his target. Campbell with the football, we return. They lead 65 to nothing here on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back. Dylan Ernie on the move. Quarterback design run. He's dropped for a loss of two on that scramble. Presbyterian playing hard in this fourth quarter despite the score. And Tyreek Johnson on the sack. Plenty of new faces for the Camels out there. The receiver position. Holt Cloninger gets his first reps. R.J. Jackson. And Eves Bozeman check in in this fourth quarter. Final five minutes here in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. Campbell on to a convincing victory as Ty Good zigs through the hole, spins his way past the 45, and he gets to the 41, setting up third and six. And that's the thing, Evan, you talked about a lot of these guys coming into the reserves, playing, and talking about Eves Bozeman's and good who just ran the ball there i mean these these are guys that they play hard all week they practice hard all week they don't see the field that often when you can get in a situation where you're coming in and playing in a college football game albeit the game's over but you don't care you're out there to perform you're you're excellent at your craft you work hard all off season and when you get the chance to come into a football game you go all out and you're seeing that here with some of these reserves that have come in tonight campbell had five players tote the rock entering this game Six more have run the ball tonight. Amazing. Ernie, underneath, good, is short of the sticks, gets halfway there. Good is so close from breaking a big run. He is so shifty. He's really hard to see if you're a defender running through the hole at 5-6. It's tough to see him if you're a big defensive lineman or a linebacker. If he breaks three, he through, he is gone. Fourth and four. That that's a free play. There's your first down. Ernie takes his shot for Bozeman, who hangs on to the football, and he is short at the one-yard line. Well, we talked about Bozeman's before, just before that play, saying these guys are still playing hard. He's running full out. Result of the Bozeman's gets to the one, almost had it himself. So a gain of 37. And another great throw by Dylan Ernie. 
Mike She's Minner calls calm. him Ernie, comma, Dylan. He's an Ernie guy, and he <laughs> earned that one for 37 yards. I think Mike just didn't remember his name, but that's I, a whole I different. love it, though. I mean, running up the boundary like that was, was a wonderful thing to see. Man coverage. Ernie gives it off. Ty Good spins. And who the heck knows in that pile? Called short. The line judge somehow found the football, and it's second and goal. You think Ernie thinks this game is over? No. He, as the quarterback, ran in to try and push Good over the end line to get into the end zone. Unbelievable. Quarterbacks, and he's kind of limping out there. He's calling over to the sideline. Now, he just. He's exhausted. He's Peter. exhausted. Third string quarterback earned a scholarship <laughs> this fall. Mike Edwards checking in. Oh, my goodness. Campbell pouring it on with its starting left tackle checking in. <laughs> so he'll clear some space. I wonder which way the ball's going here on second and goal. It goes the other way. And Ty Good is into the end zone for a rushing touchdown. Campbell pouring it on in this fourth quarter. Uh, Ty Good feeling good about that one. Getting into the end zone here, working hard. He has worked hard all night since he's come into the football game. Running the rock down the field. A shifty guy at 5'6", gets lost in the scrum and finds his way into the end zone. If you're Mike Edwards there, you have to throw a question, right? Why, why is the starting left tackle sneaking into the game there, for a touchdown? There had to be a personnel issue. Someone got hurt. Someone had to come off the field. So Mike Edwards the only one to go back in. There's not many stats for offensive linemen, but rushing touchdowns certainly helps. Here's Isaac Riffle on for the extra point, and he sneaks it through. Under three minutes to go in this fourth quarter. It was a first half of passing the football. Now in the second half, Campbell's run it in for three touchdowns. And they just ran a simple concept in the backfield, soft zone, ran up the field inside zone for the touchdown. A convincing bounce back win for that man right there, Mike Minner, who saw his team lose at the gun, a one point loss at home. He'll earn his 37th win as head coach and his largest margin of victory in, in program history. And, and he sure as heck earned it. He and his entire coaching staff earned it. You know, the game is won during the week. You know, I had a coach that I played for always used to say, the game's already decided. Uh, you just have to earn it during the week. So you, you, pray, you play how you practice. And Mike Minner, after that one point defeat, and he said, that is our floor. We've created our floor with that one point loss to Elon and it can only get better from here. And he got his team mentally prepared after such a heartbreaking loss, a gut punch. Sometimes programs unravel from those types of losses and they whip off two or three losses in a row. He didn't allow his team to get lost in that fray and he, can't, he got them prepared and you see what has happened here tonight. Andrew Doss goes out of the end zone, circles his way around the orange and sneaks up to the 17 yard line. Presbyterian with the football for maybe the final time starting with 2.43 to go in the fourth. We mentioned Presbyterian scoring 75 points a game. Did not expect Campbell to have this level of production tonight. Credit to their offense. Credit to their offense. Credit to their offensive line. You know, again, that offensive line coming across the front, 325 pounds they averaged, led by you know, Mike Edwards. He's another guy you see from a size perspective. He runs at, goes at 6'7", 355, redshirt junior. I mean, he's another type of NFL prospect. Uh, if you look at it, the coaches believe the same thing. But, yeah, Evan, they've done a great job, and it all starts with the offensive line down. Heffley sits in the pocket, slings a completion out to the 24. It's a tough catch in coverage as Presbyterian moves the chains with Jacoby Jones. Brent Heffley has slung the rock around tonight. 38 pass attempts, five interceptions. Sends his tailback, Chase Tinsley over to his right. A lot of time for Heffley, who's picked oh. off. Tenth turnover for Campbell, and this is a chance for more points. Down the sideline, and he stepped out of bounds. Nearly a pick six for Greg Streeter. Wow, how about that? Another turnover for Campbell. Starting to sound like a broken record up here. But again, just playing the game like it's supposed to be played. Not in there often. Not in there for a lot of gameplay as Streeter. 
But when you're in there, you got to make the most of your opportunities in the area. Is getting to the outside boundary. Let's see, Peter. Did see he stay in bounds? Here? Yes, oh, he yep. did step out of bounds. Out of bounds. Okay. Good call by the side judge. So it brings the offense back to work. So many turnovers. Ten for this defense. Unbelievable. Uh, Dylan Ernie back to work on first and goal. Feeds his tail back and just short to the half-yard line. And play continues with under two minutes to go. Campbell searching for 80 points in this matchup. Two years ago when these teams met, it was 28-14. Much different story tonight in Bowie's Creek. Chris McKay in the backfield now for Campbell. McKay searching for the touchdown. Gets his chance and nowhere to go. Great stop by this Presbyterian defense late in the second half. Peter's team's playing with heart despite the score as Hunter Mills gets the stop. Well, that's the Kevin Kelly style, no matter what happens. And do you think Kevin Kelly is going to continue with that same type of offense that he has? Yes, he will. He's not going to abandon it after tonight's game. Nine, He's going to learn from it. He's a nine-time state champion at Pulaski Academy in Little Rock, Arkansas. That offense has hit a bump on the road tonight. Yeah. They bounce back next week at Dayton, one of the league favorites in the Pioneer Football League before hosting Moorhead State in early October. Campbell takes the week off, and sometimes nothing is worse after a big win than a few days of downtime. Ernie on third and goal, feeds McKay, keeps his feet moving, still turning to the end zone, and he's stopped a yard short. You're right, Evan. You know, that's one of the worst things as a coach where, you know, we, we, we stop our train and now we're off for two weeks. And that's why the mental reps are so important the next couple of weeks. The coaching staff, which I have full confidence that they're going to be able to put together a good uh, off, off week for this team. I say off week with quotes because it really isn't off. But you're just going to have a different schedule, if you will. So with the play clock, Campbell does not have to snap this ball. They could turn it over and give Presbyterian basically one second or the clock yeah. may run out at that point. Gamesmanship here is these teams playing with honor, letting the clock run down. Campbell dominant from the start, holding the highest scoring team in the country scoreless tonight in Bowie's Creek as the Camels complete a 72 to nothing victory, earning their first win on the season. It was something to see. A uh, great week of preparation by both teams and, and Campbell. And we talked about it on the onset, Evan. They had to make sure they didn't get lost in the formations and the different things. They had to do their job. And, man, did they do their job tonight, 72 points later. Campbell forces 10 turnovers, a dominant defensive performance. And the offense, led by backup quarterback Wiley Hartley, passes for a program record 342 yards. Peter, this game was impressive all the way throughout. How about Campbell tonight dominating on both sides of the well, ball? Well, dominating on both sides of the ball. Wiley Hartley, your quarterback who hasn't played yet this year, stepping in the sophomore, looking like a senior it during this Jordan game. Jordan Goko in the second half escaping the defense. He was one of a bevy of touchdown scores. Nine different, nine different players score a touchdown on the night. Nine different players. You see the, the team for Campbell over there by the band. Goko again strutting into the end zone. That was a 60-yard dash for Jordan Goko. The defense dominant with a safety tonight for Brevin Allen. And overall, overwhelming Ren Heffley, the starting quarterback. Overwhelming them. And it was the defensive line. Not one time did it look like, you see the interception there on the near side boundary, not one time did it look like they had to blitz any linebackers. They got pressure with their four linemen. And then Dylan Ernie lobs up a prayer. It is answered somehow by Eves Bozeman. Campbell pulls out the win, 72-0 for Peter Montemurno. Evan Budrovich signing off from Bowie's Creek. Thank you for joining us tonight. The Camels get their first win on the season, forcing 10 turnovers here in Bowie's Creek. You have a great night. We'll see you next time on ESPN+.